Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Marvel. Journey of the Superman Adventures. Chapter 61. Because Professor X was manipulated by Stryker and Magneto successively, he created two psychic storms, which almost killed humans and mutants. And the sequelae caused by this was the piercing headache, but now Adam actually said that he didn't feel any discomfort. Everyone was shocked when they heard Adam's answer. At this time, Professor X suddenly said, I probably know the reason. Mr. Shying seems to be innately immune to psychic power and other forces. I tried it just now, but I couldn't sense him. Adam couldn't understand why these people made such a fuss, and asked, what happened? Phoenix Girl explained. When the professor uses the brainwave enhancement machine, his spiritual power will become the most powerful, especially when he uses this huge power to lock a certain group of people. The erosion of the spiritual power of the person will cause a piercing pain, and the person will die after a long time. Adam was startled when he heard this, and said, what? It happened like this. Didn't the entire human beings in the world suffer from the erosion of Professor X's spiritual power just now and have headaches? Storm said helplessly. That's right, that's why the professor wants to go to Washington to explain this matter. After hearing this, Adam broke out in a cold sweat when he remembered the impact of this incident on the world. He gritted his teeth and said, Magneto. By the way, where is the brain wave enhancement machine? After hearing this, Logan said, that house collapsed, what are you going to do? Adam said, you go first, I will destroy that machine completely. No one can get this machine. After finishing speaking, he left. After Storm looked at it, she said, as for being so angry. After speaking, she found that Professor X was pale and trembling. What's going on? Cyclops asked. Professor X said with a serious face, we have overlooked one point. Most people will have a splitting headache when they are affected by my mind, and they want to curl up and hit their heads. What about the people who fly or drive during this period? What will happen to them? Alas, Eric has gone too far this time. After hearing this, Storm opened her mouth and said, it shouldn't be such a coincidence, after all. I wanted to say something but found that I couldn't continue. Professor X sighed, and said, oh, forget it, let's go to Washington and explain this matter to Mr. President. On the other side, Adam came to the room where the brainwave enhancement machine was located and found Jason who had long since died. He sighed softly, and then let the heat rays burn the room and Jason's body to nothing. After everything was burned, Adam asked, Athena, quickly use various channels to count how many people have been hurt in today's incident. Athena knew that Adam was very angry and in a bad mood, so she quickly said, okay, master. I'll go and count it now. Please wait a moment. Soon, the statistical results came out, and Athena said with some hesitation, master, there have been hundreds of thousands of car accidents and hundreds of plane crashes all over the world, with a total of more than 1 million deaths and tens of millions people are injured. It's very serious. Although Adam was mentally prepared, he was still stunned by the news. His face was flushed, and he smashed the wall around him with a bang, and said word by word, Wan. See, Wang, you are very good, you have successfully provoked my anger. Athena, hurry up, check the whereabouts of Magneto, I will definitely not let this guy go. After hearing this, Athena said seriously, Understood, Master, I will start looking for it right away. Once I find Magneto, I will notify you as soon as possible. Adam nodded and said, well, hurry up. By the way, are the X-Men gone? After hearing this, Athena said, they are waiting for you. After hearing this, Adam sighed and said, okay, let's go. By the way, report the situation of the dam to the nearby city government. The ice wall won't last long. After hearing this, Athena said, Okay, Master, I have directly invaded their system and sent them the situation here. Did Adam speak a little bit, left the base and met Logan who was waiting for him at the gate. After seeing Adam, Logan said, Adam, are you okay? You look so bad. Adam sighed, and said, Logan, do you know how many people died just now? More than 100 million people, just because of Magneto's selfishness, more than 100 million people died innocently, go straight to the White House and fight those real fighters. Logan, who was about to comfort Adam, opened his mouth and said, I'm sorry, Adam, if I hadn't left them because of private matters, maybe this kind of thing wouldn't have happened. After hearing this, 
Adam shook his head and said, Oh, it's none of your business. In fact, I didn't expect Magneto to be so ruthless. Forget it, the dead are gone, let's go back first. Logan nodded, and returned to the plane with Adam. There was silence on the plane, because everyone saw Adam's cold face, so they all sat quietly in their seats, even the mutant children sat quietly, as if they also felt the heavy breath. Professor X looked at Adam and asked, I heard that your computer manager can contact you at any time, can you know about the disaster just now? Adam looked at the old man full of self-blame, sighed softly, and said, the number of people affected by this disaster is too large. More than 1,000 million people were slightly injured or seriously injured, and more than 100 million people died of various diseases. Disaster. Everyone was stunned by the news. They didn't expect that so many people would be injured and died in just 10 minutes. Professor X closed his eyes in pain, and he didn't know what he was thinking. Speechless all the way, the plane sprinted quickly in the sky, and soon came over the United States. Adam stood up and said, Okay, everyone, I still have something to do, we will meet later. Logan, come to New York to find me when you are free. Storm, who was flying the plane, was taken aback when she heard Adam's words, and said, You want to stay here? Well, wait a little while, I'll find a place to land. Adam shook his head with a smile, and said, There's no need to look for it specially. Landing somewhere, I can jump right now, don't worry, I'll be fine. After hearing this, Logan persuaded, I know you feel uncomfortable, in fact, we also feel uncomfortable, but you can't make fun of your own life. Adam forced a smile and said, Okay, don't worry, I just want to be sober, I'll be fine. Of course, if you don't open the door, I'll open it myself. After hearing this, Professor X said, Open the door, Aurora. Storm had no choice but to open the rear hatch. Adam waved to everyone and jumped from the plane. He didn't do this to be cool, nor to find death, but he just felt a little uncomfortable in the plane. Ever since he heard the death toll, he has been blaming himself that such a thing would not have happened if he hadn't insisted on letting Magneto join. Along the way, he felt more and more depressed. Seeing that the plane was approaching Washington, he didn't want to talk nonsense with politicians, so he decided to jump off the plane directly. Although Professor X couldn't sense Adam's thoughts, as someone who had been there, he knew that Adam was in a bad mood. If he didn't open the door, there would definitely be a dispute, so he asked Storm to open the door and let him go out. Since Adam dares to make such a request, it will be fine, because Professor X knows that Adam is not the kind of person who seeks short-sightedness, otherwise he would not come out to be a superhero. After Adam jumped off the plane, he closed his eyes and quietly felt the wind blowing in his ears. The scorching sun in the afternoon shone on Adam's sturdy body, and Adam's restless heart suddenly calmed down. Then very suddenly, he fell asleep in the air. What is very strange is that after Adam fell asleep in the air, he did not continue to fall, but quietly suspended in the air. About an hour later, Adam woke up from his dream and found that he was still falling. He asked with some doubts, what happened to Athena just now? Why am I still falling? After hearing this, Athena said, I don't know about this, but Master, you slept in the air for an hour just now, and I called Master many times, but you still haven't woken up. Adam was startled when he heard this, and said, What? I actually slept in the air for an hour. I just closed my eyes for a while, how is that possible? Athena continued, I don't know about this, and what's even more weird is that the Master has been suspended in the air just now. After hearing this, Adam asked doubtfully, what's going on? After hearing this, Athena said, maybe it has something to do with the sunlight. Didn't the owner regain his strength because of the sunlight on the dam before? This time the situation seems to be very similar, but it is because of too much absorption. I can't digest it, so I fell asleep. After listening to Athena's words, Adam nodded and thought it made sense, and he also felt that his physical strength had recovered. He closed his eyes and felt his body carefully, and found that his various abilities had grown considerably. Adam opened his eyes and said with a smile, All my abilities have become stronger. It seems that my abilities are indeed related to the sun. After hearing this, Athena smiled and said, Congratulations, Master, you have found a way to improve your strength. After hearing this, Adam smiled and said, 
Yes, this is indeed a good method, but unfortunately, excessive absorption of sunlight seems to make me fall into a deep sleep, it seems that it is really the same as what you said. After hearing this, Athena smiled and said, he he, I came to the conclusion after calculation, so I'm not trying to scare you. Adam looked at the ground that was getting closer and closer, and said, okay, Athena pays attention to the current height, and then powers up the cloak. Athena smiled and said, don't worry, master, I have been calculating the most suitable distance. Adam jumped off the plane because of depression, not because he wanted to use his physical strength to feel the power of gravity, but because he made a little improvement to his cloak, as long as the electricity was turned on, the molecules inside the cloak the structure will be rearranged, and this cloak, which is usually useless except for being handsome, will become a hang glider. For this idea, Adam learned from the Batman cape in flash memory. The jersey on his body has been improved a lot by him to deal with various emergencies. Moreover, Adam also produced a silver powder that could interfere with radar or other surveillance equipment based on the mask Howard gave him, and then added it to his battle robe, so he was not afraid that someone would find him. After a few minutes, Athena said, Master, I have reached the optimal height. Please get ready, I am going to deploy the hang glider. After speaking, she activated the battery located in the waist of the battle robe to power up the cloak. After hearing this, Adam opened his hands and grabbed the handle of the hang glider transformed from the cloak behind him, and then the whole person stopped falling, but started to slide forward. In this way, Adam landed lightly on an unmanned factory, asked Athena for directions, and ran to New York. Adam had just arrived in Manhattan, New York, when he received a call from Howard Stark. Adam ran to his house while talking to Howard. Adam, where are you? Adam said. I'm heading home now, I just came back from Canada. Howard said. Oh, I called to ask, do you know the reason for what happened just now? Adam had a good meal and said, Dad, where are you? I'll tell you in detail when I get there. After hearing this, Howard said, Okay, I'll wait for you at the company. Adam nodded and said, Okay, Dad, I'll go right away. After speaking, he walked straight into a shopping mall, changed his jersey into a casual suit, and then hailed a taxi. Stark Tower. Because of something on his mind, Adam hurried into the Stark Tower, hurriedly saluted the person who saluted him, and then took the elevator to Howard Stark's office. When Adam entered, Howard Stark was watching the TV, which showed the statement issued by the President of the United States about the major disaster that happened today. Perhaps it was because Professor X and others had met the President, so the President made a statement this time. In the incident, he pointed all the crimes at William Stryker, and issued a statement saying that he would give up the opportunity to continue to run for the presidency of the United States next year. Click, Howard turned off the TV, turned to look at Adam, and asked, you're here, take a seat. Adam looked at Howard and asked, father, are you okay? Are mother and Tony okay? Howard smiled and said, well, they are fine. After I heard about this, I was worried that something would happen to you. Fortunately, you are fine, so I am relieved. Adam's eyes turned red when he heard this, and he took a few deep breaths to calm himself down, and then said, Thank you dad, I'm fine, this matter. Adam told Howard Stark the whole process in a heavy voice say it again. After hearing this, Howard walked over and patted Adam on the shoulder, saying, In this matter, your choice is right, kid. Adam shook his head and said in a low voice, but, if I hadn't called S.H.I.E.L.D., Magneto wouldn't have had the chance to change the brain wave booster, and there wouldn't have been so many deaths. Howard comforted. Adam, listen, kid, what happened this time is not your fault, and you don't want something like this to happen. Well, don't just think about the past, you have to learn today's lesson, next time you can do better this time. Adam smiled gratefully after hearing this, and said, thank you, dad. Howard asked. Since you have chosen this path yourself, you have to stick to it. You still have a long way to go. Adam nodded and said, Well, thank you dad, I understand. Howard asked, By the way, are you free tonight? Adam shook his head and said, The thing I want to do most now is to find Magneto, and then give him a good meal, what? Is there anything I need to do tonight? Howard nodded and said, That's right. I'm going to hold a charity party tonight to provide some help to the families of those who died in this disaster and those who were seriously injured. When Adam heard that this was the case, 
He immediately nodded and said, if this is the case, then I will definitely go. Magneto, I just let Athena keep an eye on it. Howard said, well, since that's the case, you can go back and have a good rest first, and then go to the Hilton Hotel at 7 o'clock in the evening. Adam stood up and said, okay, father, then I'll go back first. After saying goodbye to Howard, he left Stark Tower. After Adam left Stark Tower, he went home and fell asleep on the bed. Although Adam's physical strength had recovered, his mental exhaustion was not so easy to recover, this has nothing to do with mental strength. He needed enough sleep. This sleep lasted for a full three hours, and it was already six o'clock when he woke up. Seeing that Adam got up, Athena appeared beside Adam's bed and said, Master, are you awake? Adam asked, Athena, have you found Magneto? Athena shook her head and said, I didn't find it, Master. Magneto's ability is to control the magnetic field. He usually uses this magnetic field to interfere with surveillance equipment. The last time we found him was because Mystique used a computer to find information about the X-Men, Reason. Adam sighed, and said, I knew it would happen, forget it, what about the priest? Athena smiled and said, the priest has made some progress, as long as you give me a little time, I will be able to find the hiding place of the other party. When Adam heard the good news, he nodded with a smile and said, well, yes, you should go to the priest first, as for Magneto, we are not in a hurry, we know his purpose, and we will be able to catch him one day. Quote. Athena nodded and said, well, I see, master, by the way, you are going to the charity party tonight, I have notified Miss Christine before, she has been placed in the Meister Hotel by the company, and has been you sent her an evening dress in your name. After hearing this, Adam said, well, you did a good job. Athena called Christine and said that I would be there soon and asked her to get ready. After speaking, he took off his clothes and walked into the bathroom. About 10 minutes later, Adam came out fully dressed, then drove a Ferrari sports car from the garage and left the villa, rushed all the way to the entrance of the Meister Hotel, handed the car to the hotel guard, and walked in hotel. Based on the information provided by Athena, Adam went all the way to the room where Christine was and knocked on the door. Excuse me, who are you looking for? It was Emma's voice. After hearing this, Adam said, it's me, Adam. The door opened, and Adam walked in with a smile, only to find that Christine was not in the living room. Emma saluted Adam slightly, and said, hello, Mr. Adam, Christine is putting on makeup, why don't you wait in the living room? Adam nodded after hearing this, and said, well, well, I'll wait for her here. After speaking, he picked up a glass from the wine cabinet, poured a glass of red wine, and sat there to taste it slowly. After Adam waited for more than 10 minutes, Christine finally came out of the alienated room. After seeing Adam, she smiled and said, Adam, you are here, sorry for keeping you waiting. Howard Stark organized a charity party for today's emergency, and planned to use all the money harvested tonight to help the families of those who lost their lives and the injured people today, so Adam came to Metz wearing a black casual suit special hotel, to pick up Christine who also came to the party. Adam went into Christine's room and waited for a while. Christine finally finished her makeup and came out. The evening dress Athena chose was a black long-sleeved, more solemn evening dress, which was worn by the tall Chris. Ting's body, not a star in the original world, don't take it for granted, looks extraordinarily beautiful. When Christine saw Adam, she smiled and said, Ah, Adam, you're here, sorry for keeping you waiting. Adam walked over to kiss Christine and said, You look so beautiful today, honey. Christine smiled and said, Okay, I put on the makeup with great difficulty, so don't mess it up. Adam shrugged when he heard the words, and said, Okay, I'll clean you up tonight, now, beautiful lady, let's go. After speaking, he stretched out his arms. Christine blushed slightly, and said angrily, I hate it. After speaking, he took Adam's arm intimately, and walked out of the room with Adam. In front of the Hilton Hotel, it was already very lively at this time. When they heard that Howard Stark was going to hold a charity party, the reporters who heard the news came to the front of the hotel one after another, and very consciously divided into two rows to shoot the VIPs who entered the venue. At this moment, there was a muffled sound of a motor, and immediately, all the reporters saw a Ferrari sports car with the ADAM 07 brand parked in front of the hotel. After a female reporter from the New York Daily saw Adam, she cheered, 
Hey, look, it's Adam Stark, oh my god, sitting next to him is Christine. Could it be that the two of them got married because of Twilight Stark? Because of the City of Light. The reporter standing beside her saw that the badge was from the Daily Bugle, and when she heard what her colleague said, she curled her lips and said, Hey, little girl, don't you know that Adam Stark is a famous playboy in New York? Who knowing what kind of relationship they have, maybe it's just for fun, HMPH, as long as these celebrities have money, they will spread their legs apart, it's really cheap. Adam, who was about to walk into the hotel with Christine on his arm, just heard this sentence. Who made his ears so sharp? He glanced at the reporter of the Daily Bugle with some displeasure, and kissed Christine very tenderly. Lips, and then sent a middle finger to the reporter of the Daily Horn, leading the shy Christine into the hotel. The female reporter of the New York Daily laughed after seeing it, and said, Oh, what a handsome gesture, it seems that Adam heard your words. The reporter of Bugle Daily sneered secretly, saying, Really? If you dare to provoke me, I want to see if you can still be so arrogant tomorrow. After speaking, he turned and left here. In it, Adam just told her why she did that. Christine looked at Adam a little funny after hearing this, and said, You, you are so impulsive. Offending the reporter is no good. Regarding Christine's words, Adam just smiled and didn't speak. All these are my own protective colors. Before my identity is exposed, these negative news will be the gap between Adam and Sha Ying. No one would have thought that the righteous superhero Sha Ying would be a stingy playboy, rich second generation. Adam and Christine walked into the scene of the party together, which immediately caused quite a commotion. After all, although Adam is a famous playboy, he is also a well-known genius, especially in the upper class. The often mentioned, other people's children. Adam smiled slightly, saluted some people he knew actively, and then returned the salute one by one to those strangers who saluted him, and brought Christine to Howard Stark and Maria. Maria saw her son coming, and said, Hey, Adam, you're here, this should be Christine, your beautiful, kid. Adam put his arms around Christine's waist and said, Yes, she is my girlfriend, Christine. Christine saluted slightly after hearing this, and said, Hello, Mrs. Stark, Mr. Stark. Howard Stark nodded slightly, and said, Well, yes, Adam, since you brought Christine here, then go there, your brother is also there, you young people should have your own activities, don't need to accompany with us. Adam nodded after hearing this. He put his arms around Christine, obviously feeling the other person's tension, and said, Okay, then let's go. After speaking, he took Christine and left there. After they walked a certain distance, Christine exhaled and said, I'm so nervous. Adam laughed after hearing this, and said, Hee hee, this is not like the Christine I saw for the first time. After hearing this, Christine remembered the scene when she met Adam in the bar, blushing and said angrily, That time I thought you would subtly rule me. Adam smiled after hearing this, and said, Unfortunately, you still haven't escaped from my palm, you are still hidden by my rules. Christine snorted and said, Yeah, I was attracted to you for some reason, and I can't leave you anymore. Just as they were flirting and walking towards Tony, Adam saw an acquaintance who was talking to someone, Obedestine, and the person beside him is Norman Osborn, the founder of the recently rising Osborn Enterprises, a legendary figure. When Adam was about to go around them, Obedestine had seen him and was walking towards him with Norman Osborn. After seeing it, Adam thought inwardly, and walked to Obedestine with a smile on his face. Adam said, Good evening, Uncle Obedi, Mr. Osborn. Obedestine smiled and said, Oh, Adam, you're here too, hee hee, who is this? Adam said indifferently, Our company's new film is the heroine. Obedestine smiled slightly after hearing this, revealing a smile that all men know. Adam wanted to kick him in the face. And although Christine didn't know that Adam introduced herself like this, after all, she had met Adam's parents just now. When Adam introduced him, he said that he was his girlfriend, so she stood quietly beside Adam and didn't speak. At this time, Norman Osborne stretched out his hand with a smile, and said, Nice to meet you, Mr. Stark. Adam smiled and said, Me too. Mr. Osborne, you can just call me Adam. I have read a few books written by you, and they are all great. Norman Osborne said, Hee hee, Adam, I actually know about you too. We all envy Mr. Howard for having a son like you. Adam said modestly, Hee hee, you've praised me, Mr. Osborne. 
At this time, Obaday said to Adam, Oh, Adam, you also know that Mr. Osborne is engaged in biological research. He wants to buy some information about super serum from your father. Tell your father how to do it. So, he never agreed to it. As soon as Adam heard this, he knew why Norman Osborne and Obadestine were waiting for him here. He smiled apologetically and said, You are late, Mr. Osborne, all the information about the super serum is here. It was taken away by a scientific research organization of the military. Obadestein was taken aback when he heard it, and said, when did it happen? I don't even know. Adam shrugged and said, I don't know when it happened, but this is from my father and me. I don't think my father will lie to me. Norman Osborne sighed immediately after hearing this, and said, so that's the case. Alas, I wanted to learn from those materials to improve some of my ideas. Adam didn't have any hostility towards this person, so he reminded, Actually, although the military took away the data, I don't think there is any company in the field of biotechnology that can compare with Osborne Enterprises. Maybe Mr. Osborne can learn from here. Get it, if you negotiate with the military, maybe you don't even need to pay for the research fee, so you can also study the serum to improve your own ideas. Norman Osborne's eyes lit up when he heard Adam's words, and said, That's right, Ha ha, thank you for your suggestion, Adam, in terms of biotechnology, our Osborne company can say that we are the best without hesitation. He is quite confident in his company's scientific research level, so he was really moved by Adam's proposal, and he was also full of gratitude to Adam. After all, if Adam hadn't reminded himself, maybe his plan would not succeed one day, but now at least there is a glimmer of hope, isn't it? Listening to Norman Osborne's words, Adam smiled and said, he he, that's my honor, Mr. Osborne. After speaking, he shook hands with Norman Osborne. Abedestein saw that there was no room for himself to intervene, and he was a little upset. He was about to interrupt, but found that the music that was playing just now had stopped, and Howard Stark had come to the front. The party was about to begin, so they tacitly stopped their words and quietly waited for Howard to speak. And Abedestein also knew that the charity party had already started, so he had to curse Adam in his heart, and listened quietly to Howard's speech, after all, it was really not suitable for him to speak at this time. Adam was standing beside him, how could he fail to see Obedestin's expression, smiled secretly, held Christine's hand and looked at his father quietly. Howard Stark looked at the rich people and the upper-class people below, and said indifferently, gentlemen and ladies, good evening, you all know the purpose of my charity gala tonight. A few hours ago, because some people because of this, there's been a terrible headache around the world, and I think everyone here has been through that. After the people below heard this, they also showed expressions of fear and palpitation. After all, most of the people present were wealthy people living in the upper class. Not enjoying enough of everything in this world, today's situation is the same as the face-to-face -face dance of death, they vowed never to feel it again. Howard Stark waved his hand slightly to silence the crowd, and said, we are lucky. Because we didn't go out today, we didn't fly, so we can gather here to hold this party. But today there are more than 100 people thousands of people were killed or injured because of this accident. This is a major global disaster, first of all, let us mourn for the compatriots who suffered today. After finishing speaking, he closed his eyes. People in the audience had also heard that there were many people affected by the disaster, but they never thought that the number of people affected by the disaster would reach more than 1,000 million. This is not a small number. When Howard said that he would mourn for these people, everyone closed their eyes and sent sincere blessings and prayers from their hearts. The mourning went on for nearly three minutes or so. Howard opened his eyes and continued, Okay, gentlemen, today's charity auction will start in a while. Before that, I personally donated 100 million US dollars to help the people who suffered in this disaster and their family members. After saying that, he saluted the people below, and then stepped off the stage. Howard donated 100 million US dollars, which shocked the people below, but it was more of admiration. Norman Osborne said with a smile, Mr. Howard's character is really admirable. Adam looked at Howard and said, he has always been my goal and a beacon to guide me. After hearing this, Norman Osborne said, Hee hee, your father will be very happy to hear it, you know. You and Tony have always been his pride. I have seen it several times. Every time he mentions you, the kind pride. 
Adam shrugged and said, By the way, Mr. Osborne, I heard that you have a son, why isn't he by your side? Norman Osborne showed a helpless smile, and said, That kid is with his friends, he he, he doesn't like to participate in this kind of gathering, he thinks this kind of gathering is hypocritical, he he. Having said that, when he mentioned his son, Norman Osman still had a flash of pride and pride in his eyes, obviously he was very satisfied with his son. At this moment, Tony seemed to have spotted Adam in the distance, and waved to Adam to let him pass. After Adam saw it, he said apologetically, Sorry, Mr. Osborne. Norman Osborne also saw Tony waving to Adam, and said with a smile, Hee hee, go ahead, nice to meet you, Adam. Adam smiled and said, Me too, Mr. Osborne, goodbye. After saying goodbye to Oba Destine politely, he took Christine and left there. On the way to Tony's side, Adam said, Sorry, Christine, I introduced you like that just now out of a kind of protection for you, I hope you don't think about it. Christine smiled and said, Okay, I can tell, you don't seem to like that Mr. Obedestine. Adam nodded and said, That's right. Although that person seems to be very enthusiastic about me, he has been doing some things that are not good for me. HMPH, he thought I didn't know anything about it. After hearing this, Christine said worriedly, then you will be okay. Adam smiled and said, why? Ha ha, don't worry, he doesn't dare to do anything to me now, I'm afraid he will follow you, after all, this person does things by hook or by crook. Only then did Christine realize that Adam was protecting herself, and she was moved, and said, thank you Adam. After hearing this, Adam frowned deliberately, and said, I've said it before, don't thank me again. After hearing this, Christine said coquettishly, Okay, people are wrong, at most, at most, you can punish at night. Adam laughed when he heard the words, and said, Okay, that's what you said. The two came to Tony's side talking and laughing. There are some young men and women gathered around Tony, chatting there, very happy, and of course there are some movie stars, well, they are all women. Adam smiled and waved, Hey, Tony, are you okay? Tony walked out from the crowd and came to Adam's side and said, Me. Of course it's bad, you know, I was having a good time at noon, and suddenly I was overwhelmed by the piercing pain, so bad luck. Quote. After hearing this, Adam was speechless. He really didn't know what to say about his younger brother. Tony also found Christine at this time, and smiled awkwardly, Ah, you are Christine, he he, I made you laugh, just pretend you didn't hear what you just said. Christine smiled and said, he he, nice to meet you, Tony, you are indeed as interesting as the rumors say. Tony smiled after hearing this, aha, really, that's really great, hey, Christine, do you have any friends, please accept them for me, maybe I will fall into the vortex of love too. While speaking, a beautiful girl about 13 or 14 years old, with long blonde hair and wearing a blue evening dress, walked up to Adam very excitedly, and said, Hello, Adam, I'm Nikki Hilton, no thinking that I could actually meet your real person. After speaking, he hugged Adam. Adam was a little embarrassed by the little girl's enthusiasm. After all, his girlfriend was standing beside him, but he didn't dare to use force, for fear of hurting this innocent and beautiful girl. Okay, Miss Hilton, I'm glad to meet you too, can you let me go? After hearing this, Nikki Hilton immediately said in displeasure, Adam, I already call you Adam. If you want to call me Nikki, I will let you go. After hearing this, Adam said helplessly, Okay, Nikki, can you let me go? At this moment, a girl who looked a bit like Nikki Hilton came out, pulled Nikki Hilton away, and said, Sorry, Mr. Stark, my sister just likes your novels too much, I hope you will take offense. Of course, Adam didn't have the same knowledge as a child, and said with a smile, Of course not, she is very cute. Nikki Hilton was immediately dissatisfied after hearing this, and said, Hey, Adam, I'm already 14 years old, and I've passed a lovely age, you should say I'm pretty. After hearing this, Nikki's sister snapped, Nikki. After speaking, she smiled awkwardly at Adam. I'm Nikki's sister, Pars Hilton, nice to meet you, Mr. Stark. Adam smiled and said, Just call me Adam, just like your sister. Pars Hilton laughed and said, well, you can also call me Pars, that's what all my friends call me. At this time, Nikki Hilton suddenly pointed at Christine and asked, Adam, are you in love with Sister Christine? 
Adam nodded after hearing this, and said, yes, Christine and I are indeed in love. Nikki Hilton was immediately frustrated after hearing this, and said, ah, does this mean that I have no chance? Ha, huh, sister Christine, although I like your movies very much, I also like Adam, so I want to be fair to you compete. Christine smiled and said, okay, my sister accepts your challenge. The other party was just a little girl, and she didn't mind Nikki Hilton's innocent words at all. After all, she was confident in her appearance, and most importantly, she didn't think Adam would fall in love with a little girl. Adam participated in a charity gala and met a pair of sisters from the Hilton family, and the little girl Nikki Hilton even made a bold statement, declaring war on Christine, saying that she also likes Adam and wants to compete fairly with Christine. Christine didn't care about the little girl's words. She had some confidence in that, but what really made Christine feel like a real rival was the smiling Pars Hilton. Although he hid it well, Chris Ting still saw the love for Adam in the eyes of the other party, so Christine gently stopped Adam's arm, as if to remind the other party that the famous grass had its own owner. Tony, who had been standing next to him and couldn't get in the way, laughed when he heard Nikki Hilton's words, hey, why do I feel like I was forgotten by you guys after Adam came? Nikki Hilton wrinkled her pretty nose, snorted, and said, who likes to be with you fool, if it wasn't for hearing Adam's childhood story, I wouldn't talk to you. Adam was speechless after hearing this. Tony really used his childhood to pick up girls again. Seeing the look in Adam's eyes, Tony panicked and said, hee hee, I didn't actually say anything. Adam sighed after hearing this, and said, forget it, it's not just once or twice, I'll clean you up next time. Pars Hilton smiled and said, hee hee, your brother's feelings are really enviable. Adam glanced at the innocent and lovely Nikki Hilton, and said, don't you also have a good sister? Pars Hilton smiled sweetly, looked at his sister, and said, yeah, hee hee. He seemed a little melancholy, but Adam didn't say much, since it was the first time he met her, and she was obviously from the Hilton family. It's better to be cautious. It seemed that Adam was not interested in further questioning, so Pars Hilton quickly collected his mood and said, let's go, Adam, let me introduce you to a few people, all of whom are young members of some consortia or families. Adam didn't say anything after hearing this, but brought Christine, Tony, the Hilton sisters and others to the small circle on the other side. Of course, the plot of the legendary dude pretending to be coercive and then being slapped in the face by the protagonist did not appear. Everyone is the elite of various industries, very casually chatting about some current affairs news or topics of interest to each other, appearing very enthusiastic. Soon, the highlight of tonight's gathering, the charity auction, started. Everyone walked into the auction hall where the seats had been set up, and sat in their respective seats. There are all kinds of weird things in the auction. The serious ones are all kinds of calligraphy and paintings or antiques, and the outrageous ones are the clothes worn by some celebrities, and the like. Of course, this is just Adam's feeling. In fact, there is no at all, just NBA players' shorts. At the end of the charity gala, the money collected was not a small amount. Howard, together with some consortium leaders, established a fund called, Heart to Heart, to monitor the implementation of the money. Tony was sitting next to Adam, and when he heard the name, Heart to Heart, he curled his lips and said, It's such an ugly name, why not use my name? After hearing this, Adam smiled and didn't speak. After all, he knew that Tony was just bored and wanted to vomit. The party lasted nearly two hours. At the end of the party, Adam said goodbye to the Hilton sisters and Tony, took Christine to the Meister Hotel, and then began to punish Christine. The next day, when the morning sun shone through the window, Adam was doing morning exercises with Christine in his arms. After all, Christine was going to Canada to shoot a movie soon. Remembering that it was already a month later when he saw Christine again, Adam suddenly increased his speed, making the song of life sung by Christine soar again. After the cloud and rain were over, Christine said angrily, what a bull. You don't feel sorry for me at all. Adam laughed and said, hee hee, then whoever said to continue, I'm just a very obedient bull. Christine kissed Adam and said, I was so happy last night, I love you so much, Adam. Adam smiled and said, I love you too, baby, but let's get up quickly, or Emma will wait in a hurry. Christine nodded and said, okay, take me to the shower. Adam stood up when he heard the words, picked up Christine and walked all the way to the bathroom. 
Soon Christine's high-pitched singing came from the bathroom, as if the couple were stealing food again. Although there was a lot of reluctance, Christine still left after all, and Adam did not send her off, because Adam still had one important thing to do now, which was to acquire a newspaper office. Why did Adam think of buying a newspaper, and why didn't he send Christine to the airport for it? All this is caused by a piece of news. Remember the reporter from the Bugle Daily last night? That's right, it's this guy. It's irrelevant to Adam to publish a piece of news in the newspaper, but it's very unfavorable news to Christine. This makes Adam furious and decides to sue this guy to the court, and then take action to report the horn to the Daily News. By over. So when he heard the news, he gave up sending Christine to the airport, and called Stephen's lawyer, making an appointment to meet in the hotel. At around 10 o'clock, lawyer Stephen arrived at the hotel very punctually. Lawyer Stephen smiled and said, you look good, it seems that the news didn't affect you in any way. Adam curled his lips and said, I've seen that kind of news a lot. However, although this news doesn't have any impact on me, it has a great impact on Christine's career. That's why I asked you to come here. Lawyer Stephen was taken aback and said, are you serious this time? Adam was speechless after hearing this and said, why do you all ask me the same question? Am I just a scumbag who plays with other people's feelings? Lawyer Stephen shook his head and said, Oh, I didn't mean that, I just felt a little surprised. Adam said helplessly, Okay, don't mention this again, what we have to do now is to take that guy named John to court, and then you can use various channels to acquire the shares of the Daily Horn, I want to acquire that newspaper. Lawyer Stephen was taken aback when he heard the words. He guessed the first thing before he came, but he didn't expect Adam to actually want to buy the newspaper this time. The Bugle Daily is just a third-rate newspaper with no market value at all. Adam, he would do this kind of thing for his girlfriend, it's really impressive. Are you sure you want to buy the Daily Bugle? As far as I know, the boss there has been in arrears of wages for a long time. This newspaper has no commercial value at all. Adam said indifferently. Yes, I just want to buy it. As for the future, just send a few people from Saguang Company to manage it. It doesn't matter even if it goes bankrupt. I bought it just to vent my anger for Christine. I want to let those the guy knows, it's okay to write about me, but it's not okay to write about the people around me. Lawyer Stephen was shocked, and said, Oh, my God, Adam, you won't come for real, right? Even if that newspaper office doesn't have any market price, you need at least tens of millions of dollars to buy it. Adam said lightly after hearing this, it's okay, I have plenty of money. Lawyer Stephen was speechless for a moment. People in the Stark family are all such freaks. If you don't mess with him, he is a gentleman, but once you mess with him, he will become a lunatic and spend money to live, will kill you. Lawyer Stephen knew that he couldn't change Adam's decision, so he said, well, since you've decided, I'll do it. Adam smiled and said, yes, that's how it should be. I want to complete these things as soon as possible. It's best not to let this matter affect Christine's career. Lawyer Stephen nodded and said, okay, I'll get it done as soon as possible. Adam nodded and said, well, then I will trouble you, Lawyer Stephen. Lawyer Stephen shook his head and said, it's my bad luck to have your father and son in the booth. After seeing off Lawyer Stephen, Adam did not go out through the main entrance, but came to the hotel parking lot, drove his sports car and left the hotel roaringly. Was quickly thrown off by Adam. When I got home, I just walked into the living room. Athena appeared next to Adam and said with a smile, Ha ha, master, you were so cool last night. She was talking about Adam sticking out his middle finger to the reporter of the Daily Bugle, and there were two kinds of news about this in the newspaper today. Adam said angrily, Okay, Athena, don't talk about it anymore, by the way, did the priest find his hiding place? After hearing this, Athena smiled and said, After analysis, I finally found the hiding place of the priest. After speaking, she called out a map and showed it to Adam. After Adam saw it, he said, It happens that I'm in a bad mood right now, so I'll go over and catch this guy. It's best to see who's standing behind him. After hearing this, Athena said, Master, you have to be careful. Adam nodded and said, Don't worry, I've improved in all abilities now, and nothing will happen. By the way, you continue to speed up your search for Magneto. After finishing speaking, 
he disguised himself and left home. No one put on his battle robe and walked to the place where the priest was. The priest seems to be very confident about his ability to hide. The place where he hides is actually a small bar in Queens, New York, a bar named Octopus Girl. Adam came to the building opposite the bar. After checking the bar with his clairvoyance ability, he found that there was a secret room under the bar, and he couldn't see through the situation inside with his clairvoyance ability. The walls of the energy layer or chamber contain lead. Adam smiled coldly after seeing it, and said, Ha, huh, there is indeed a problem here, whether it is the energy layer or the lead layer, it means that there must be some secrets under this bar, hee <laughs> hee, Athena invaded their system and gained control of the monitoring equipment Quan. After speaking, he opened his cloak and turned into a hang glider, and when he reached it, he landed the back door very lightly on the ground. Athena said, Master, they have already controlled the monitoring equipment of the entire bar, but there is no information about the secret room in their computer. After Adam heard this, he said, Sure enough, he he, since it's not in the computer, let's go in and look for it ourselves. After speaking, he cleverly stayed in from the back door of the bar, and rushed all the way to the room leading to the secret room. There was no one in that room, but there were eight men in black with weapons guarding the room outside, but this was not a problem for Adam. He used his own speed to quickly knock these eight people unconscious, and then dragged they went into the bathroom, where there was an under-repair sign on the door, and into the manager's office. In fact, there are more traps and surveillance devices in this office than in the entire corridor, but for Adam who owns Athena, all of this is just a decoration. When Athena gained control of the upper-level computer of the real bar, Adam walked in swaggeringly, no one noticed at all. But what is still unknown is what is under this secret room. After all, Adam can't see inside at all. Although he is not afraid of being discovered, if the enemy escapes early, it will take a long time to find them. Adam used clairvoyance to find out the location of the entrance to the secret room, and then asked Athena to crack the password of the secret room door and walked into the secret room. As soon as he walked into the secret room, there was a piercing siren, and Adam realized that he had underestimated the organization, because the bottom of the secret room was basically a sensing area, as long as someone walked from above, the other party immediately knew that someone had entered the passage of the secret room. But it doesn't matter if it is discovered. After all, with my own strength, it is more than enough to create such a place. I sneered and looked at the Gatling machine guns protruding from both sides of the passageway of the secret room, and didn't even look at the rain of bullets that were fired at me. Move forward. Equals 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 Below the secret room is a huge processing factory, and the priest Adam is looking for is the person in charge here. No one knows his name, and everyone calls him a priest, but this priest does not have the compassionate heart that ordinary priests have, he is a ruthless executioner. He is sitting in his office now, looking at the three-pointed woman who is tied to a cross by his subordinates, this woman is a goblin that a normal man will feel impulsive after seeing it. With a bumpy body, red hair like flames, and lips like rubies, people can't help but want to take a bite. It's a pity, looking at such a charming goblin, there is no desire in the priest's eyes, but there is a serious murderous look and madness. The priest looked at the welts on the woman's hands, licked his lips and said, Oh, my dear, Natasha, I didn't expect her to fall into my hands. The woman called Natasha was very calm. Facing the unbearable pain, she didn't show any expression on her face. She just asked lightly, how did you find me? I don't think I have exposed any loopholes. The priest smiled and said, yes, you did not reveal any loopholes, but I never trust anyone, so I randomly check everyone under my command several times a day. Unfortunately, in yesterday's spot check, you yourself said secret. Natasha was startled when she heard this, and said, what? Could it be that your ability is not as simple as controlling mutants? After hearing this, the priest laughed and said, the ability to control mutants. Ha ha, I don't have such ability. What controls those mutants is a drug made from the brains of mutants that our organization obtained when we cooperated with William Stryker. Quote. Natalie asked. He he, I lost so badly before I arrived first, so what is your ability? The priest smiled lightly, and said, my ability. 
are you trying to find out my secret? Tear off your left thumb, break free, and knock us down. Natasha was really shocked at this time. That's what she thought just now, and asked, your ability is mind reading. How is this possible? If it is really mind reading, I have spent many times alone with you, why did you catch me until now? The priest looked at Natasha's expression, laughed and said, you guessed wrong again. My ability is not mind reading either. What really reads your mind is the cross behind you. Ha ha, I didn't expect the famous black. The widow will have today, ha ha. This woman turned out to be the agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., Black Widow. She was arrested unexpectedly, and the situation seemed to be very unfavorable to her. And at this time, the alarm of this secret base suddenly sounded, and the priest stood up abruptly, and said, what happened? A soldier in black uniform walked in from outside the door, and said, Father, Sha Ying broke in. All the weapons in the secret passage are useless. He has already entered the factory. Please move quickly. Although the priest didn't panic after hearing this, he knew that the people in his base were no opponents of Sha Ying. As a person who had seen Sha Ying fight and fully understood Sha Ying's strength, he knew that he would not be able to fight Sha Ying for the time being. Sha Ying confrontation. Well, I got it. Inform everyone and launch a suicide attack. Don't worry, Sha Ying will not kill people or let you die in front of him. He will save you. This is his weakness. The soldier nodded after hearing this, and said, Yes, father, and left the office after speaking. The priest looked at Natasha and smiled slightly, and said, Hee hee, I didn't expect this hero to find me so soon. Forget it, I'll go first. Don't miss me too much, baby. Put a bomb on her body, so that the hero will find me. Ying won't chase us anymore. After speaking, he laughed and left. The priest who turned to leave didn't notice the anger that flashed in Natasha's eyes. This anger didn't seem to be directed at the priest. She seemed a little dissatisfied with Sha Ying's intrusion at this time. After about 10 minutes, the sound of fighting outside had stopped. Adam walked into the priest's office and found the black widow who was glaring at him. However, this time Adam didn't think about why the black widow was angry at all, he only had one sentence in his mind. How could you be alive? Facing Adam's questioning, Natasha suddenly became angry, and said, What do you mean? You ruined my interrogation and scared the priest away. How dare you ask me why I am still alive? Mr. Sha Ying, you what exactly does that mean? But Adam didn't hear Natasha's words. Looking at the familiar face in front of him and the tattoo he had touched with his own hands before, Adam stretched out his hand and grabbed Natasha's neck, shouting, Why are you still alive? Natalie, tell me. Suddenly being strangled by Adam, Natasha suddenly felt breathless and felt like she was dying at any time. She trembled all over when she heard Adam's name and her longing voice, and said in disbelief, Yeah. Adam. Adam let go of his hand after hearing this, and Natasha immediately fell to the ground and panted heavily. Adam took a few deep breaths, then destroyed the bomb tied to Natasha's body, looked at Natasha whose eyes were full of tears, turned around without saying a word, and prepared to leave. After Natasha saw it, she ignored the pain on her body and shouted, Wait, Adam, don't go. Adam turned around and said, Don't leave. Who left first? Hee hee, I didn't expect you to be the famous Black Widow, ha 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 ha, it's so interesting, ha ha, I actually slept with the famous Black Widow Black Widow, ha 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 ha. Adam kept laughing wildly, but the uncontrollable tears in his eyes proved that Adam didn't laugh because of happiness all the time. Natasha looked at the crazy Adam and shouted distressedly, Adam, listen to my explanation. Adam waved his hand and said, Okay, I've already trusted you once, ha ha, I never thought that the person I love the most is actually an agent, ha ha, your shield. I have special abilities, otherwise, how could they have sent you, the most profitable subordinate, to lure me? Natasha shook her head after hearing this, and said, It's not like that, Adam, listen to me. But Adam didn't give Natasha a chance, and said flatly, needless to say, I don't love you anymore, I didn't expect you to be still alive, hee hee, I'm still so sad in vain, by the way, I'm Shying's business, tell Nick Fury if you like it, I think he will definitely reward you. Natasha, who was calling behind her, left at super speed. Natasha stared blankly at Adam's back, and murmured, Adam, do you really think I left you willingly? Yes, I did approach you because of the mission, 
but I'm not the kind unscrupulous person, I have my own bottom line, if I didn't like you, how could I have slept with you, hee <laughs> hee, yes, it's useless to say these things now, don't worry, I won't tell anyone Shying's identity. After finishing speaking, Natasha walked to the clothes taken away by the priest, picked up the communicator, and lightly reported the progress of the task. The mission failed. The priest has already recognized me, and this mysterious organization seems to be able to detect other people's minds. Pay attention to this when sending people next time. As for the priest's ability, I haven't been able to find out. Nick Fury, who was in the S.H.I.E.L.D. building, heard the report from his capable men and asked, what happened? Natasha said. Shying broke in. The priest seemed to be very afraid of Shying, and left as soon as he heard Shying coming. Where are you now? Nick Fury asked. After hearing this, Natasha said, Still in that base, you can find me by looking at the coordinates on my communicator. Although the priest has left, there are still some materials left here, which may be useful to us. Nick Fury nodded after hearing this, and said, Understood, I will send someone over. Natasha said lightly, Yes, I see. After she finished speaking, she hung up the contact, and stroked the very secret letter on the communicator, dazed in a daze. Besides, when Adam knew that the so-called Black Widow was his first love, Natalie, he immediately understood everything. Why was Natalie so shy when she wanted to take her home for the first time, so that Adam didn't take her to meet her parents in the end? I also know why the other party doesn't like taking pictures so much, and I know that the other party was fine a few days ago, but suddenly fell ill and died a few days later. Everything is a bureau of shield, the purpose may be to control oneself, or something else. Natalie didn't want to see her parents because she was too shy, but because she was afraid that her identity would be found out by Howard Stark. Maybe the other party died of a sudden illness because her father found out the other party's identity. Shield was afraid that her father would turn his face. That's why he came up with such a way to let Natalie, no, it should be Natasha to leave him. Adam came from the priest's base and ran all the way. He didn't have any thoughts in his mind. He didn't know where he should go. He ran rampant on the road, avoiding pedestrians and cars on the road with his remaining rationality, and ran forward. Bye. Seeing her master running around like this, Athena yelled a few words, but found that Adam, who had always been keen of hearing, did not respond at this time. Athena was startled, and quickly controlled the energy box on Adam's waist. After clicking, there was a trace of bewilderment in Adam's eyes. Athena, why did you shock me with electricity? Athena was taken aback after hearing this, and said, Master, have you forgotten what happened just now? If you continue to run, you will fall into the sea. Adam heard the words and said, What? Fell into the sea. After speaking, he realized that he was standing on the edge of a cliff, and he might fall if he walked a few more steps. Of course, Adam is not afraid of falling into the sea, the seawater will not drown him, but he will definitely fall into sleep again. Athena asked, Master, are you alright? Adam has already remembered what happened just now, although he wanted to forget the previous time very much, but when his mind recovered, those memories were recalled by him again, he took a few deep breaths and said, Thank you, Athena, I'm fine. How could he be all right? You must know that he was still in a state of ambiguity about feelings at the beginning, and he was not the playboy he is now, but Natasha walked into his heart with the perfect posture of a goddess. When he learned that Natasha had died of illness, don't mention it. How sad. The reason why he became a playboy was just to forget Natasha, but he didn't expect that his love for so many years turned out to be a scam, and his so-called unforgettable first love turned out to be a trap set up by S.H.I.E.L.D. All this made him almost go crazy. If Athena hadn't woken him up with an electric shock just now, maybe he would have become a killing machine afterwards. Please don't blame Adam for this, because Adam has never encountered any difficulties since he was a child. The difficulties in scientific research are helped by the magical flash memories, and the difficulties in life are helped by his parents. As for the difficulties in the mind, because Howard at that time, Adam didn't even know that his lover was just a secret agent who was ordered to come to him, so when he knew that Natasha was the dead Natalie, and his first love turned out to be a carefully planned layout, Adam felt full of destruction and killing intent. With the help of his own subconscious and Athena, he successfully survived the crisis. Of course, Adam needs to face the subsequent problems alone. After all, this is a test on the road to growth.
Seeing that Adam finally calmed down, Athena asked, Master, what's wrong with you? Do you know that woman? Adam showed a bitter smile, and said, You know, Athena, I liked a woman a few years ago, we fell in love, and I found out that she likes writing, so I desperately learned writing, which I am not good at, and finally flashed my memory with the help of her, I became a writer, hee hee, for this woman, I changed a lot. Just when I was about to marry her, she died suddenly, from a rare disease on earth. Athena guessed the back in an instant, and said, the woman just now is the one who died. Adam nodded and said, yes, when I learned the news of Natalie's death, I was heartbroken and devoted myself to scientific research. In order to release the sadness in my heart, I became a playboy, but I have never forgotten her. Even Christine didn't let me forget her, hee hee, the irony is that she actually appeared in front of me today, she turned out to be the famous black widow, ha 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 ha. After Athena saw it, she felt heartache for the first time. She emerged from Adam's mask, hugged Adam gently, and said, it's okay, master, even if anyone in this world betrays you, I will always be with you. Although Adam and Athena couldn't touch each other's bodies, Adam seemed to feel Athena's love for him at this time, and murmured, Athena. It's good to have you. Athena blushed immediately after hearing this, and said, Oh, master, there seems to be a problem with my data, I'll go back first. I'll give you a suggestion, you'd better ask your father about this matter, Howard Smith Mr. Tucker. And disappeared. When Adam heard Athena's words, he murmured, Father. That's right, let's go find my father. After speaking, he moved his feet and disappeared. Adam left the edge of the cliff and set off again, and then suddenly found that his speed had reached twice the previous speed, which made him a little puzzled, and asked, Athena, check my body. After Athena heard it, she immediately resumed her working state, and said, yes, master. After speaking, she checked Adam's body with the instrument installed on the battle robe. There is no problem, master, but the abilities of the master seem to have increased a lot. Adam was a little puzzled, what's going on? Athena guessed, master, it should be related to the unconscious state just now. Maybe the master's body has completely absorbed the energy absorbed from the sun yesterday. Congratulations, master. Adam sighed after hearing this, and rushed to Manhattan without saying a word. Stark Tower, Howard's office, Howard and Adam talked for a long time. Howard was silent for a while, and said, so, you already know. Adam nodded and said, I saw her today. I was still a little skeptical. I hoped that I was wrong. Hee <laughs> hee, I didn't expect it to be her. Howard sighed and said, sorry, I should have told you about this earlier. After hearing this, Adam said, you don't need to apologize, father, you just want to protect me. I can only be grateful for this, and have no other emotions. Howard said, in this way, your identity should be known by shield, but don't worry, I won't let them touch your hair. Adam shook his head and said, thank you, father, but I want to solve this matter by myself, and I will bear any consequences by myself. After hearing this, Howard smiled and said, you have finally grown up. Adam was a little ashamed. After all, he always thought he was mature, but today's blow made him understand that the so-called growth is not just the growth of age or knowledge, but a more complicated process than these. People want real growing up is actually hard. Howard looked at Adam's expression, smiled gratifiedly, and said, since you have seen your own shortcomings, you can just keep working hard. I believe you will handle this matter well. Adam said gratefully, thank you, dad. Howard asked, Adam, as a superhero, you will definitely meet S.H.I.E.L.D. again, so how do you plan to face Natasha? After hearing this, Adam said firmly, the person I love is just the Natalie in my memory, and she is already dead. As for this Natasha, I will treat her as a stranger. After hearing this, Howard knew that Adam's words were just angry words, and he must still harbor hatred in his heart, but Howard also knew that he really couldn't help Adam in this matter. This needs Adam to experience and face it by himself, otherwise Adam it's never possible to grow up. Well, that's fine, you make up your own mind on this matter, and listen to my advice, son, don't make any decisions when you are furious. Adam nodded and said, well, I will remember your words, dad. After hearing this, Howard said, by the way, I heard that you advised Norman Osborne to participate in the Super Serum Project. Adam nodded and said, that's right, 
Although the super serum project is very dangerous, more than 60 years have passed, and the current technology should be able to decipher the serum components in Captain America's blood, even if the super serum project cannot be completely successfully replicated. Serum, but it should be possible to make some potions that can strengthen the body. Howard asked, why do you have such an idea? Adam said in a deep voice, we human beings are too weak, and there are more and more mutants. There is no guarantee that one day a dictator like Hitler will appear among them. If we still only upgrade our weapons and forget ourselves, we will it will be eliminated by this era. This is why I want to tell Norman Osborn about the super serum information, and give him an opinion. Howard laughed. So, do you believe Norman Osborn will succeed? Adam nodded and said. I read some articles he wrote before, and I think he is really good at biotechnology, and now Osborne Enterprises is also the top company among American biotechnology companies. Howard nodded and said, since this is the case, then I will help him. After all, he alone cannot get this project. Adam was taken aback when he heard this, and said, Dad, didn't you say that you have always opposed the research on super serum? Howard smiled after hearing this. Yes, I am indeed opposed to the super serum research plan, but since you have said so, why should I hesitate? I believe you. At this moment, Athena suddenly told Adam that Natasha had come to the villa. Adam's face changed slightly, and his fists could not help but clenched tightly. After seeing it, Howard said, What? What happened? Adam nodded after hearing this, and said, Well, I need to deal with some things, we will talk later. Father, said goodbye to Howard in a hurry and returned to the villa. After returning to the villa, Adam found Natasha in front of the villa. She was wearing sunglasses that could cover half of her face, casual clothes, jeans and a t-shirt, but even so, wearing it on Natasha's proud figure still looks very attractive. But Adam was not attracted by her, but said coldly, what are you doing here? You want to check what's in Shying's lair, don't you? Natasha shook her head and said, aren't you going to invite me in? Adam said lightly after hearing this, sorry, I don't have the habit of inviting strangers into the house. Natasha's voice was trembling, and she said, Adam, I. Adam rudely interrupted Natasha, saying, okay, Agent Natasha, don't get any more information from me, you can break in by yourself if you have the ability. Let Athena open the door and walk in. Natasha was silent for a while, and said, believe it or not, I didn't tell Nick your real identity, and my love for you has always been true, and it's still there. After she finished speaking, she turned and left. Adam, who had already walked into the living room, sighed softly. He knew that Natasha hadn't lied to him just now, but for Adam and Natasha, it was already too late, the two of them were just familiar strangers. Seeing Adam's expression, Athena worriedly said, Master, are you all right? Adam nodded and said, well, I'm fine, I want to rest for a while, even if the sky falls, don't wake me up. After speaking, he walked into the bedroom without looking back. On the other side, Natasha wiped away her tears, drove her sports car and left Adam's villa, then called Maria Hill on the way and asked her to have a drink together. Maria Hill asked, Natasha, what's wrong with you? What happened? Natasha said lightly, Mary, I'm in a bad mood, drink with me. Maria Hill is one of Natasha's few friends in the United States. Hearing the tired voice of her best friend, she said, Okay, where are you, I'll go right away. While driving the car, Natasha told Maria her location, then parked the car directly outside a bar, and walked into the bar. Maria Hill just came to New York. Her purpose was the information left by the priest. When she heard the phone call from her best friend, she quickly ordered the shield. He stopped the car by himself and walked to the location Natasha said. By the time Maria Hill appeared in the bar in casual clothes, Natasha was already sitting quietly in the corner drinking a dull drink. Maria frowned and walked over. So what happened? Natasha drank the wine in the glass in one gulp, and said, Hee hee, don't ask so many questions, come and drink with me. I feel a bit bored drinking alone. Maria reached for the beer and said, Natasha. Natasha burst into tears, and said, I met Adam and Maria, do you know? Maria was taken aback after hearing this, and said, Adam. Could it be Adam Stark? What happened when you saw him? He can't bully the famous Natasha, right? Seeing his girlfriend's appearance, 
he thought that Adam had done something, and his psychological evaluation of Adam suddenly dropped to the lowest level, but he also faintly felt that the relationship between his best friend and Adam didn't seem simple. In fact, it's not surprising that Maria thought so. After all, Maria didn't know about Natasha's last mission, and Adam's reputation in the outside world was just like that, a playboy. Natasha shook her head and said, I hope he will do something to me, but unfortunately, he didn't even look at me. Maria was immediately confused by Natasha's words, and asked, then tell me, what happened? Natasha said while drinking, he he, Adam saw me on the way back from finishing the task today, he he, he saw that his girlfriend who had been dead for many years was not only alive and well, but also knew that she was a agent, he he, it really is retribution. After speaking, she fell down on the wine table with a bang, and she actually passed out due to her sadness and alcohol. Maria Hill was a little surprised when she saw that Natasha had passed out. You must know that Natasha is a seasoned agent. Generally speaking, it is impossible for her to get drunk with such a degree of alcohol, let alone now Natasha is in a coma. Maria Hill hurriedly took Natasha to the Shield Hospital in New York, and watched as she was brought into the emergency room, waiting anxiously. Soon the doctor came out, and Maria Hill hurried over after seeing it. How is her condition? After hearing this, the doctor said, it's nothing serious. She has a lot of welts on her body. It may be because she was tortured before, and she didn't get treatment in time. In addition, her mood was extremely unstable, so she fell into a coma. She will be fine after a period of rest. Maria Hill frowned and said, okay, arrange a special plane and transfer her to the headquarters. After speaking, she walked over and looked at Natasha's haggard face, and sighed softly. She is not an idiot, she knew the general situation from Natasha's words, sighed softly, and said, Oh, who made us secret agents, forget about him, Natasha, you have no future with him, and he looks like I already have a girlfriend. At this moment, the doctor who had just left knocked on the door and said, Sir, the helicopter is ready to transfer the patient. Maria Hill nodded and said, Well, then start transferring, be careful. After speaking, she followed the doctor and boarded the plane with them. After flying for a few hours and arriving at the Trident building of S.H.I.E.L.D. in Washington, Maria Hill personally arranged for Natasha to go to the nursing room and then walked all the way into Nick Fury's office. When Maria Hill opened the door and walked in, Nick Fury was holding a document and looking at it. When he heard footsteps, he didn't lift his head and said, Maria is back. Where's Natasha? Maria Hill said lightly, Natasha passed out. Nick Fury raised his head, frowned and said, Natasha is unconscious. What's going on? After hearing this, Maria Hill said, that's up to you. Nick Fury ordered coldly, Agent Hill, please answer the question seriously. Upon hearing Nick Fury's order, Maria Hill saluted and said, yes, sir, the doctor said that Natasha was injured all over her body, and she was unconscious because of her grief. When Nick Fury heard that it was a psychological matter, he felt a little helpless. The female agent is good at everything, but it is easy to have troubles in terms of emotions. In this life, they will either be killed by the enemy because of the failure of the mission due to emotional problems, or they will betray their own organization and be killed by their own people because of emotional problems. Nick Fury always thought that Natasha was a little different, but he didn't expect that he still couldn't escape the relationship problem. Did Adam Stark see Natasha? The only person who can affect Natasha's emotions and cause such serious consequences is Adam Stark. Maria Hill nodded and said, Well, Natasha may have been seen by Adam Stark after completing the task, and according to what Natasha said just now, Natasha did not go to treat her injuries afterwards, but went to Adam Stark, but was rejected, and Natasha fell into a coma from grief. Nick Fury sighed after hearing this, and said, well, I was going to send her to a new mission, forget it, give her a week's leave, let her go to Africa to clean up her mood. Maria Hill nodded and said, I see, I will tell her, by the way, what kind of character will make you prepare to dispatch Natasha? Nick Fury put some information on the table with a clap, and said, it's an elite who just retired from the FBI. I took a look at his information. It would be a pity if this person retired. Natasha would have shot him. Take it in. Maria Hill glanced at the information and said, Director, the other party already has a wife and child. Nick Fury said lightly after hearing this, It will be gone soon. 
Maria Hilton was shocked and said, What? What do you mean? Nick Fury said coldly. You know the rules of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Hill, don't ask what you shouldn't ask. Maria Hill said lightly. Yes, I know. Nick Fury said. Okay, you go out, and arrange this task by the way. Maria Hill knew what Nick Fury meant. Although she struggled a bit, she finally nodded and said, I see. After speaking, she left the office. Nick Fury smiled with satisfaction after reading it, and then drew a red circle on the name of Frank Castle, on the information, and whispered, Hee hee, Frank, you think you can get out of your body, but you never thought about it. I know so many things, will the FBI let you off so easily? What's more, you have offended someone. Equals 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 equals. A week passed quickly, and Adam had come out of the complicated state of mind when he saw Natasha again. Although he did not forgive Natasha in his heart, he was able to face it calmly, and the whole person seemed to be overwhelmed. A more mature feeling. At this moment, Adam is adapting to the sudden increase in strength in the basement laboratory. During this week, some jokes have been made because he can't adapt to his own strength. Fortunately, Adam didn't go out, and no one saw him. The appearance of, um, except for Athena. Athena, turn off that video. You better delete it. When Adam was a little helpless, Athena always liked to make fun of Adam with this video recently. Adam had said the above words more than once, but it didn't work for Athena at all. Athena giggled, and said, I don't want it, I want to keep it in my collection, and when the master has a child, I will definitely show her this video. Adam heard the words and said, why her? Athena replied, of course it's because I like girls. While they were talking happily, Adam's phone rang. Master, lawyer Stephen is here with a phone. Adam wiped his slightly sweating body with a towel. Adaptive strength training is not the kind we usually use, otherwise it will have no effect and said, huh. Take it over, it must be because of the newspaper office. Sure enough, Adam's guess was correct. Lawyer Stephen came to him just to let Adam sign the contract. Okay, the weather is nice today. I'm getting tired of staying at home these days. Let's go to Central Park to sign. After hearing this, Lawyer Stephen said, Okay, you are the boss, by the way, they asked for the workers' representatives to go with them. Adam didn't care about it, and said, let them go, then we'll see you in Central Park in an hour. I'll call you when I get there. After hearing this, lawyer Stephen said, okay, see you then. After speaking, he hung up the phone. An hour later, Adam appeared in Central Park wearing sunglasses and a slim-fitting short windbreaker. After calling Stephen's lawyer to find out the location of the other party, he came to one coffee shop after another. The person who came to sign the contract was a bald middle-aged man. When he saw Adam walking in, he quickly stood up and said, Hee hee, Mr. Stark. I didn't expect it was really you. I'm Jason Ryan, and I'm the major shareholder of the Daily Bugle. Adam glanced at lawyer Stephen after hearing this, and lawyer Stephen explained, the newspaper still has 15.00% of the shares in the hands of the editor-in-chief. I have communicated with him, and he has no plans to sell the shares. After hearing this, Adam shrugged and said, Okay, let him alone, I just have the final say, sign the contract. There was also an old man who came with them. Hearing Adam's words, he asked, Excuse me, Mr. Stark, the boss has already owed us three months' wages. What are you going to do about this matter? After hearing this, Adam said lightly, Since you know me, you should know that I don't lack that little money, and I won't cheat you, just don't worry. Jason Ryan also nodded, and laughed, Hee hee, it's so funny that these poor guys would doubt Mr. Stark's character. If you want me to say Mr. Stark, it's better for such an old guy it's good to be fired. After hearing this, Adam glanced at the fat pig like Jason Ryan, signed his name on it with two swishes, and said, Okay, sir, he is my employee from now on, and this matter has been discussed with you. Nothing to do. Although Jason Ryan was very angry when he heard this, but when he remembered the identity of the other party, he immediately withered, and walked out of the coffee shop dejectedly with a few dry laughs. Chapter 71 Looking at Jason Ryan's back, Adam sneered, No wonder the Daily Bugle hasn't developed yet. It turns out that the boss is such a person. 
Lawyer Stephen shrugged and said, that's why I told you that this newspaper is not worth acquiring. Adam glanced at the somewhat embarrassed old man and said, okay, Lawyer Stephen, since I have signed the contract, you can go about your own business, I will call Saguang Company and send someone to check them out later. Pay their wages, that's what you want to hear, sir. The old man was a little excited, stood up and said, thank you, Mr. Stark. Adam waved his hand and said, okay, go back and tell them the good news first, I think they should have been waiting impatiently. After hearing this, the old man thanked Adam repeatedly and left the coffee shop. Lawyer Stephen also said goodbye to Adam when he saw that he was fine. As for Adam, he called Shiguang Company and arranged for someone to go to the Daily Bugle to check the accounts. When he saw the rare sun outside, he suddenly remembered the idea of going to the park. After leaving the coffee shop, looking at the people around with children playing together, I suddenly remembered that I haven't played with Tony for a long time, so I decided to call Tony tonight to relax. While Adam was wandering around and planning his evening activities, a violent explosion sounded from the distant zoo. After hearing this, Adam knew something had happened, so he quickly found a hidden place, put on his combat uniform and ran to the accident site. When Adam arrived at the scene, a fast food restaurant near the zoo was engulfed in fire. Many people had been scratched by broken glass, and some people were calling 911 or emergency calls with their mobile phones. After Adam saw it, he said, hey, gentlemen, stay away. After speaking, he took a deep breath, and then a gust of cold air was blown out by him. The flames of the fast food restaurant were quickly extinguished by Adam. He first took a look at the fast food restaurant with his perspective eyes, and after finding that there was no problem, he said to the surrounding people, can you do me a favor? Lift them out of it, I have given emergency services have been called. After hearing this, a young citizen patted his chest and said, it's absolutely fine, Sha Ying, we'll help you bring out the slightly injured. Others also expressed their willingness to help. Adam smiled after seeing it, and used his own speed to transfer the seriously injured person to a nearby hospital. Because Adam notified the hospital through Athena before this, the hospital had already prepared several emergency rooms. When Adam brought the injured to the hospital gate, they quickly dispatched the injured to the emergency room. After going back and forth several times, Adam finally sent the seriously injured people to the hospital, and then returned to the explosion site, and found that the place had been taken over by the FBI, and no one else was allowed to approach. Several people who helped Adam just now were also interrogated by the FBI. Adam frowned, looked around and found that there was one less person among the slightly injured and unconscious crowd. These phenomena made Adam have some doubts about the explosion. At this moment, a middle-aged man wearing black sunglasses and a black suit came to Adam and said in a questioning tone, I heard that you moved all the injured away. Who allowed you to do this? Maid. Adam sneered after hearing this, and said, Oh. Is it wrong for me to save someone? The middle-aged man said coldly, You are not wrong to save people, but you are very likely to rescue the gangsters too. If you let the gangsters escape, will you bear it? Which hospital is the injured? Tell me quickly. Adam frowned after hearing this, and said, what gave you the courage to talk to me like that? After speaking, he stared at the FBI agent with cold eyes. The FBI agent seemed to be used to trouble some people. He took out his ID and said, I just represent the country. Adam sneered after hearing this, and said, oh, is that so? He he, since you are so powerful, you can find where the wounded are by yourself. After speaking, he suddenly disappeared taking away the other party's clothes, leaving him with only a red streak. As soon as Adam returned home, Athena appeared and said with a smile, Master, you are really too bad to play tricks on a person representing the country like that. Aren't you afraid? Adam said angrily. Okay, Athena, don't mention that FBI anymore, and quickly call up the video near the fast food restaurant. I didn't want to be nosy, but since I'm offended, let me check this as there's something tricky in it. After hearing this, Athena said, Okay, master, please wait a moment. After speaking, she began to search for fast food restaurants and nearby video materials, and then sent a few photos or videos that she thought were acceptable to Adam. Master, these people have problems. They have been staring at the family at table 3, and according to this video, the man under surveillance seems to have noticed it, and then there was an explosion. Unfortunately, 
the people on the kitchen side the monitor is broken, I don't know if it was broken intentionally or it was broken in the first place, otherwise the cause of the explosion would definitely be found. Adam nodded after hearing this, and said, well, yes, check the identity of this man, maybe he is the person the FBI is looking for. Athena called up another picture and said, I've checked it out. This person's name is Frank Casso. He was one of the FBI's elite agents. He completed his last mission a month ago and has left. Adam asked, so, who are the other three? Athena quickly replied, these people seem to be gangsters nearby, and I don't know who was instructed to monitor Frank. Looking at Frank's information, Adam suddenly found a clue, and said, wait a minute, the information says that Frank's last action seems to involve a person, check the identity of this person. After hearing this, Athena checked it out quickly, and said, Okay, master, I found out, he is the only son of U.S. Congressman Edward Shemiel, and he did not know how he appeared in the last mission to encircle the drug trade. That place was implicated in this mission and was killed. After hearing this, Adam said, So, it is very likely that this congressman is taking revenge. He blew up a restaurant in order to kill Frank's family, and he didn't even care about the lives of other people in it. Sure enough, these guys are moths, can you find evidence? After hearing this, Athena shook her head and said, I can't help it, master, I don't have any information. Adam just asked casually just now, and he didn't hold much hope, so there was no surprise. Athena said at this time, master, Frank is probably not dead. After hearing this, Adam suddenly remembered the missing person, and said, that's right, as an elite soldier who has experienced many battles, he will definitely wake up earlier than ordinary people, so he is the one who left just now. After hearing this, Athena called up the video just now, analyzed it, and said, after my analysis, there is an 80.00% possibility, and the FBI is still searching there, so it should be looking for Frank again. Adam asked, so, are Frank's wife and son dead? Just now he was only focused on saving people and didn't pay attention to those who were already dead. Athena checked again, and said, Frank's wife died on the spot. It seems that your son has been saved by you, and he should still be in the hospital. After hearing this, Adam said, I'll go to the hospital to have a look. I think Edward Shemir will definitely not let it go. After hearing this, Athena said, Okay, I will investigate the whereabouts of Frank's son immediately, and then send it to you. Adam nodded and said, Okay, then I'm leaving. After speaking, he left. Equals 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 equals. On the other side, at a remote corner of the artificial lake in Central Park, after a burst of ripples, a person walked out of the artificial lake. He looked around very cautiously, and then limped out. He walked to a roadside telephone booth, took out a few coins from his pocket, pressed a few numbers with difficulty, said, come and pick me up, and then couldn't hold on any longer and passed out. In less than 10 minutes, a black car drove over quickly and parked on the side of the road. A middle-aged man in a black windbreaker came out, holding an instrument in his hand, and found the person lying in the phone booth. He shook it lightly, and said, Frank, wake up, so much blood. After shaking a few times, he realized that the other party was bleeding continuously, and quickly carried Frank to the car and left. Not long after the black car left, the FBI team walked out from the other side, and seemed to follow Frank's blood here, the leader was the man Adam had seen before. He looked at the blood in the phone booth and said coldly, let him escape again. He knew that if he lost Frank, he would definitely be scolded by his boss, but he didn't dare not call, so he picked up the phone and said very carefully, boss, that guy seems to have been rescued, I'm sorry, it was our mistake, yes, yes, I understand, please rest assured, I will not fail again this time. After Adam signed the contract, he was going to call Tony to relax at night, but at this time there was an explosion in the zoo in Central Park. Adam had no choice but to put his mind away and start saving people, but he didn't expect that saving people would destroy the FBI's plan to kill people in a congressman's revenge. Based on the idea that if he manages it, he will take care of it to the end. Rescue the innocent child before killing the son of a former FBI agent named Frank. When Adam rushed to the hospital, 
Athena had already told him the location of Frank's son Jack, the name was not found, and then saw several groups of people approaching the ward with clairvoyant eyes, and quickly came to the bottom of the hospital building and jumped directly, jumped into Jack's ward. Jack was seriously injured, and his body was covered with various life-sustaining instruments. Adam was a little embarrassed when he saw it. If he ignored this child, he would probably be killed by the FBI or that congressman. The youngest child was killed for no reason, this was not what Adam wanted to see. At this moment, Athena suddenly said, Master, we can bring him home. Adam was taken aback, and said, Bring it home. Do you want to use that? But the side effects of that thing are too great. I don't know if this will kill the child. After hearing this, Athena said, We have no other way. If we want to change the hospital now, even if the owner is fast enough to take him to another hospital, the doctors there are not so fast to stabilize these injuries. Now the only that's the only way to save the child. Adam gritted his teeth and said, Okay. You prepare the life recovery liquid, and I will start after I go back. Athena nodded and said, Yes, master. After speaking, she began to prepare the equipment Adam needed. Looking at the pale-faced child who was about 10 years old lying on the bed, Adam sighed softly and said, whether you can make it through or not depends on fate. After speaking, he picked up the child and left directly through the window. As soon as Adam left, the door was pushed open roughly, and several people dressed as FBI walked into the ward, only to see an empty bed that was already empty. It's one step too late. It's all due to that Sha Ying. If he had told me which hospital he sent the wounded to, we wouldn't have come so late. I must make you pay the price. Still the same detective from before, he picked up the communicator and said, Boss, Jack Castle was taken away by Sha Ying. This guy originally just wanted to make trouble for Sha Ying, but he didn't expect to make him guess right. After hearing this, the other party was silent for a while, and said, Understood, don't worry about that child, keep looking for Frank. The detective quickly replied, Yes, boss. Then he was relieved to find that the other party had hung up, and then glanced at his subordinates. After seeing it, a few of his subordinates immediately said, Yes, it was Sha Ying who rescued the child. We all saw it with our own eyes. One of them took a look at his captain, ruthlessly hit the door frame with a bang, gasped in pain, and said, That's right, he also injured us. Only then did the agent smile, and said, Yes, I will remember your performance. Let's continue to look for Frank. After speaking, he left the hospital with his staff. Adam's basement research room. Adam put Jack in a special container, which was filled with a green liquid by Athena. This is a special nutrient solution obtained by Adam based on flash memory research, which can speed up the recovery of any injuries, but there are some side effects, that is, will consume the user's vitality, and Adam has always wanted to overcome this side effect, so he thought of the super serum, if the super serum can be used to neutralize the life recovery liquid, in theory, the user should be able to gain super strength colleagues can also recover from injuries and this medicine is called life serum by Adam. Of course, all of this is theoretical. Adam has experimented with rats before. Either the rats could not withstand the force of the medicine and exploded, or they would turn into giant murderous rats. Just after Jack was put into the life recovery liquid, the injuries in his body began to heal quickly, but right after that, Jack's vitality was also being consumed continuously. In just a few minutes, dozens of gray hairs appeared on Jack's hair. After Athena saw it, she said, Master, stop hesitating, otherwise Jack will consume at least 10 years of vitality to fully recover from his injuries. Adam heard the words, gritted his teeth, and began to concentrate on configuring the super serum neutralizer. During the process, Adam had a flash of inspiration, and added the conjecture mentioned by Norman Osborne in a book, and then added that the blue medicine in his hand dripped onto the life recovery liquid, and the medicine in the entire container began to boil continuously, and finally turned into a completely transparent medicine liquid, which was absorbed by Jack's body. Adam said to Athena, Athena, observe Jack's situation in time. Athena immediately replied, Master, Jack's vitality has stopped being consumed. Our idea is correct, but due to the strong medicine, it may take a week for Jack to wake up. Adam was taken aback after hearing this, and suddenly smiled wryly. Oops, I forgot to reduce the potency of the medicine, hee <laughs> hee, forget it, 
just treat it as a cheap little guy, Athena recorded the formula just now in a special way, and then recorded all the information destroy. Athena knew that the so-called special method was recorded in her own soul data, a special piece of data that even Adam said could not be analyzed, which was the special data that Athena naturally produced after several evolutions, except for Athena. People can decipher, even Adam himself. Understood, master, don't worry. Adam nodded and said, well, since it will take a week for this little guy to wake up, I'm going to find Tony. You continue to keep an eye on him, and find out the whereabouts of his father. After hearing this, Athena said, Okay, master, I will notify you in time if there is any accident. Adam waved his hand to show that he knew, and then left the underground research room. On the other side, Frank was taken to a private hospital after being taken away by his friends. The private doctor here is also their friend. His name is John. He was a military doctor Frank met when he was a soldier. After retiring, he became a doctor here. Looking at Frank, who was covered in blood, John was startled and said, Jamie, what happened to Frank? Jamie, the man Frank called for help, shook his head and said, I don't know, I received a call from him, and he just said, help me, and then hung up the phone, wait until I find him he already looked like this when he was in the park, but I heard that there was an explosion at a fast food restaurant near the Central Park Zoo, and he was probably injured at that time. After hearing this, John cleaned the wound very skillfully, and said, So, this matter is likely to come to Frank. The other party is so cruel that he buried so many people together. Jamie laughed and said, What? Are you scared? John snorted coldly after hearing this, and said, He saved my life, how could I regret it, it's not like you don't know me. After hearing this, Jamie said, Good brother. Just kidding, haha. -ha. If I didn't know your temper, would I bring Frank to you? John, who was treating Frank's injuries, suddenly changed his face and said, Oops. After hearing this, Jamie asked suspiciously, John, what happened? Is Frank's injury too serious? John shook his head and said, No, we can't stay here any longer, get out of here quickly, you drive, I will perform surgery on John in the car. Jamie is not an idiot either. Hearing what John said, he knew that since the other party was willing to sacrifice innocent civilians in order to kill Frank, it can be seen that the other party is an unscrupulous guy, so he would definitely investigate Frank and come to Frank's friends, so if they if he stayed here, he would definitely be found by Frank's enemies. Jamie nodded and said, okay, let's go to that part of the town. No one knows there except the three of us. After speaking, he and John took Frank into the car. A week has passed, and Adam now has one more task besides looking for the priest, Magneto and Frank, to visit Jack once a day, the child who was treated with the life serum. Within a week, the life serum had fully exerted its effect, and all the large and small injuries in the child's body had been repaired. Now it seemed that the child's brain was being healed, and at the same time, the child's whole body was beginning to be strengthened. For the time being, the life serum has no side effects. Well, of course you have to ignore that Jack suddenly grew from a 10-year-old boy with a height of more than 1 meter to a young man with a height of about 1.8 meters. Well, Jack was ripened. Looking at the child in front of him, or if it was a young man, Adam suddenly remembered the scene when he saw this child for the second time five days ago. Equals 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 legendary memories equals 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 equals. Athena, is this what you call no problem? Adam was a little crazy. He had told Athena before that he would immediately notify him if he had any problems. The 10-year-old child had been matured into a 20-year-old young man by the life serum, but Athena didn't even notify herself. Athena pointed at the data and said innocently, there is really no problem. The vital signs are very normal. It's just that I grew up overnight. It's not a big deal. I didn't become an adult within a few months. Adam was speechless after hearing this, and said, is that comparable? What should I do now? Would you let me find his father? point to a child in his twenties, and tell him, this is your son, don't thank me oh, is that the case? After hearing this, Athena said, you can choose not to speak. Silence is better than sound at this time. Adam said lightly, Athena. Athena was taken aback, and said, what's the matter, master? Adam asked with a dark face, 
Can I tear you apart? Athena immediately screamed. Master, don't want it. I'm still young, I haven't lived enough yet. Then she disappeared. Equals 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 Adam glanced at Jack's body data and said, Athena, when do you think Jack will wake up? Athena smiled after hearing this. It should be tonight at the latest, but it is possible to wake up at any time. Adam nodded and said, Okay, by the way, did Jack's father find it? Athena shook her head and said, I've been searching for the past few days, but I couldn't find it. Maybe he hid somewhere to recover from his injuries. Adam continued to ask, What about the FBI? They've been bothering me recently, have you found out why? Athena called up a picture and said, Master, this guy reported to his boss that you took Jack away, so they will trouble you. Yes, Adam has been harassed by the FBI these days, of course it is Sha Ying constantly create some conflicts to force Adam out, and then attack Adam. Although their attacks were irrelevant to Adam, he was provoked by a group of little mice all the time, and Adam was a little angry, especially today, in order to force Adam out, he wanted to shoot and kill an innocent passenger in public. The man who was shot was a mutant who used his powers to escape, but this has already made Adam want to kill. If it weren't for a voice in the dark that kept telling him not to kill people, Adam would have violently invaded the FBI headquarters this time and killed a few people. Of course, those FBI who shot it's not much better, and they spend the rest of their lives in wheelchairs, which is a kind of atonement for the sins they committed. After Adam calmed down, he asked Athena to check what happened. Unexpectedly, the detective who saw him in the park guessed that he rescued Jack. Of course, they might just say that in order to get revenge on themselves, but none of this is an excuse for them to offend themselves. Adam said lightly, Athena, find out all the criminal records of this guy, I will beat him up first, and then put him in jail. After hearing this, Athena said, Yes, master, I'll check it now. After speaking, she began to hack into the FBI's database to find the information she wanted. Equals 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 On the other side, John and Jamie took Frank to a small town not far from New York and successfully escaped the searches of the FBI and terrorist organizations and Frank is worthy of being an elite in the army. After a night's rest, he woke up the next day. Frank opened his eyes with difficulty, saw Jamie sleeping on the head of his bed, thanked his friend in his heart, and then got ready, but was held down by a person. Your injury is still not healed, so don't move. It was John. He came in to change Frank's dressing, but he didn't expect that Frank was already awake and wanted to get up, so he hurried over and held Frank down. Frank nodded slightly after hearing this, and said, Okay, I'll rest for a while. After speaking, he lay down on the bed again. At this time, Jamie had already woken up, and said happily, Ah, Frank, are you awake? Frank forced a smile and said, Well, I'm awake, thank you for saving me. Jamie smiled and said, We're brothers, why don't we say thank you? John also smiled and said, You saved my life. I'm really happy to be able to help you. By the way, what happened? Hearing John's words, Frank's eyes flashed coldly, and he said, it should be Edward Michelle's fault. John asked suspiciously, who is he? Frank calmed down, and said, it all started when I performed the last mission, and that mission involved a young man who appeared there for some reason, the son of Congressman Edward Michelle. Although I personally went to the old guy's house to apologize, but obviously he didn't want to let me go. Although I guessed something before, I didn't expect the other party to be so cruel and let so many people die together. Have you seen it these days? News, I remember Sha Ying saved a lot of people, how about Sarah and Jack? 
Jamie shook his head after hearing this, and said, the death list is not shown on TV this time. John continued, because we were afraid that your enemies would find us, we took you out of the city directly. If you want to know their whereabouts, I will go into the city after a few days and see if I can find out to what. Frank nodded slightly after hearing this, and said, okay, let's do this for now. After finishing speaking, he closed his eyes and rested. There is still a glimmer of hope for him, that is Sha Ying, he hopes that his wife and children will be saved by Sha Ying, this is the only thing he can rely on to survive. In this way, in order to obtain news about his wife and children, Frank actively cooperated with John's treatment. Frank's health improved day by day, and by the seventh day, he had completely recovered to the state before the injury, and he felt himself Frank, whose body has fully recovered, can no longer suppress the thoughts of his wife and children in his heart, and prepares to go to the city to visit. John looked at Frank and said worriedly, shall we go in with you? Frank shook his head and said, no, I've already troubled you enough. There may be more people found when we go in, so I will go into the city alone this time. After John entered the city a few days ago, he discovered that Jamie and himself were also wanted by the FBI because of Frank. After all, the time when he and Jamie disappeared was too coincidental. The FBI suspected that Frank was rescued by them, and they couldn't find the two of them, so they decided to follow Frank to arrest them, so they can't enter the city now. After hearing this, Jamie patted Frank on the shoulder and said, then be careful yourself. John handed a backpack to Frank and said, there are some cash and weapons in it. You are already wanted, remember to be more careful. If it doesn't work, come back. Let's find a way together. Frank nodded. Understood, take care of you too. Saying goodbye to his two brothers, he disguised himself and left the town in the car John had prepared for him. After driving for more than an hour, he came to New York City, hiding all the way back to the opposite side of his home, upstairs, in a room he used to store his equipment. He left some credit cards and a lot of cash in the house, as well as a lot of weapons and some protective clothing. This house, which even his wife didn't know, was bought by him, not in his own name, just in case, just in case he could observe his own home. After observing, Frank found that there were several FBI agents hiding in his home. Knowing that his wife and children were not at home, he left the room. After a day of investigation, he found out that his wife was dead, but his son was left by Sha Ying, and he didn't know where he was. It was also confirmed that the person who took revenge on him was Congressman Edward Michel, which made him suddenly ignite the fire of revenge. He put on his own protective clothing and printed a pale skull on the clothes, with armed with his own weapons, he came to the lair of a drug gang under Edward Michel in the dark of night. A little gangster saw Frank in a weird dress, and shouted, Hey, you guy, we're not a makeup party here, hurry up and take it to me and leave. When Frank saw Xiao Luo, he showed a bloodthirsty smile and said, You are guilty of bullying the weak. So go to hell. After speaking, he shot Xiao Luo to death. After soaking in the life serum for a week, Jack Castle finally woke up. When Adam heard the news, it was already late, he was calling Christine, and Athena notified Adam of the news. After Adam heard that Jack had woken up, he said to Christine, Baby, something happened here, let's see you tomorrow, um, don't worry, as long as there is nothing important, I will definitely pick you up tomorrow. I I love you too, bye, and hung up the phone. The Twilight Saga has finished filming the first part, and it was officially announced today. Unfortunately, because Jack hadn't woken up yet, Adam couldn't go to the wrapping party, so he had to call the crew to send his congratulations. Athena looked at Adam and said, Master, you should go in quickly, if you don't stop that child, many things will be destroyed. Adam was surprised when he heard this, and said, What? What happened? Athena explained. Maybe it's because Jack suddenly found out that he has grown up, so Jack seemed a little panicked. You should hurry over and have a look. Adam didn't dare to be negligent when he heard the words. He put on his battle uniform and walked directly into the underground research room, then heaved a sigh of relief. Sure enough, a child is a child. Although she already has a body in her twenties, her memory is still ten years old. Therefore, Athena, who saw the holographic image, had long forgotten that she had grown up suddenly, and looked at Athena very curiously. Jack is now 1.8 meters tall, with a handsome appearance and a standard inverted triangle body. 
if it weren't for a trace of innocence on his face, no one would think that this is a 10-year-old child. He was boosted by the life serum, so his hearing became very good. Because Adam didn't hide what he meant, Jack immediately turned around and saw Adam when he heard someone behind him. As a 10-year-old child, Jack was just at the age of worshipping superheroes. When he saw his idol Sha Ying standing in front of him, he ran over excitedly, Ah, Sha Ying, you are really Sha Ying is it? He said, ready to hug Adam. Adam didn't want to be embraced by a brat who looked like he was in his 20s. He suddenly avoided Jack and said, Yes, I am Sha Ying. Jack, are you okay? Seeing Adam's movement, Jack said happily, Oye, it's really a hero, sign it for me, I want to show it to my parents. Adam sighed inwardly after hearing this, and said, Listen, Jack, I have something to tell you. Jack was taken aback after hearing this, and said, Ah, what is it? By the way, why am I here? He realized that he was not at home. Adam asked, What do you remember? Hearing this, Jack said, Oh, I'm going to the zoo with my parents. Actually, I don't want to go to this one in Central Park. However, my father said that I will go to this one for now, and then go to another zoo. We are going to eat after visiting the zoo. I only heard a bang, I don't know anything else, by the way, Sha Ying, how did I become like this? As he spoke, he finally remembered that he had grown bigger overnight. Adam sighed softly, and said, Listen, Jack, there was an explosion, and I saved you from serious injuries. After hearing this, Jack asked immediately, what about my parents? Adam continued, your mother died on the spot, and your father, I know he is still alive, but I couldn't find him. Jack burst into tears after hearing this, and said, I don't want, I don't want my mother to die, I want her to come back to life, I don't want to become an adult, is it because of this that my mother left us? Sha Ying, help me, I don't want to grow up, I want my mother. Adam walked over. This time he didn't care about the adult appearance of the other party, he hugged Jack gently, and said, Don't cry, Jack, if you cry, your mother who is already in heaven will not be happy, good boy, you have to live well, because you are the continuation of your parents, as long as you are alive, your mother will always live in your heart, and you still have a father. There were tears in Jack's eyes after hearing this, and he looked at Adam fixedly and asked, Really? My mother went to heaven. Jack Lee who is rainy appearance almost caused Adam to kick his feet. He gritted his teeth and resisted his impulse. Adam nodded and said, Yes, your mother will observe you in heaven. You are already a man, don't cry anymore. You if you cry, your mother will be sad. After hearing this, Jack wiped his tears and said, Well, I won't cry, I don't want to make my mother sad. Adam let go of Jack, patted him on the shoulder, and said, Well, good boy. After hearing this, Jack said aggrievedly, but I miss my mother. After hearing this, Adam said, Okay, since you miss your mother, let's go out and see her. Jack asked suspiciously, Didn't you say that mother has gone to heaven? I know that only the dead will go to heaven, but how can we meet the dead? Adam said lightly, Just follow me. After speaking, he took Jack into the equipment warehouse, sat in a bat-shaped plane and flew out. Because it was already night, and the bat plane used the same silver powder as the jersey, no one could find Adam and the others, so Adam took Jack to raise the plane to the height that should be restricted. Jack has been attracted by the beauty of the night, and the sadness in his heart has eased a lot. Adam smiled slightly after seeing it, and said, Okay, now we should be the closest to your mother, and you don't have to worry about anything in your heart. Tell her, she'll hear for sure. Jack asked after listening, Really? Adam smiled and nodded, and said, well, it's true, she will pay attention to you all the time, well, I won't eavesdrop on your conversation, you should have a good chat with your mother. Jack nodded happily after hearing this, and said, yes. After speaking, he began to think about his mother and tell about his situation. Adam had earphones in his ears, but this couldn't stop him from hearing Jack's voice at all. Listening to Jack's slightly innocent words, he couldn't help but think of his own mother, not Maria, but his own biological mother. I know what my mother's name is, and I don't know what she looks like, but what is certain is that the woman that outsiders think is not my mother at all. This is what he noticed when he received the shirt, maybe I'm an alien, sometimes Adam thinks so. At this moment, Athena's voice rang in Adam's ear. Master, I found Frank. 
he put on a combat uniform with a white skull printed on it. He was in the lair of the Black Dao organization that watched him last time. He was fighting with them. Many people have died. This people are crazy, they kill anyone they see. Adam frowned after hearing this, and said, I see, pass the map to the plane, and we'll go right away. Athena nodded and said, okay, it has been uploaded. Adam nodded, and then said to Jack, Jack, you have found your father. Jack was overjoyed when he heard the words, and said, really? Ha ha, mother really heard what I said. I just said that I want to find my father, and I have already found my father's whereabouts. Adam smiled and said, yes, since you have found your father, let's say goodbye to your mother, we are leaving. Jack nodded immediately after hearing this, and said, okay, um, mom, thank you for helping me find my father, don't worry, I will take good care of him, I have grown up, and I won't cause him any trouble, hee hee, mom, goodbye, I will definitely talk to you again when I have a chance. After speaking, she wiped away the tears she couldn't help but smiled at Adam, expressing that she really wasn't crying. Adam sighed softly after seeing it, and then drove the plane directly over the address provided by Athena, and then heard the screams from the building below. Now Adam's impression of Frank directly became negative. He knew that Frank wanted revenge, but revenge in such a brutal way was not acceptable to Adam. He turned his head to Jack behind him and said, You stay here for a while, I'm going to take your father with you. After speaking, he jumped off the plane without waiting for Jack to reply, and asked Athena to watch Jack. Using the hang glider, Adam slid down, smashed through the window and entered the building where the screams were constantly coming out. Seeing Frank, whose eyes were red and shooting the gangster with two guns, he landed among them with a bang, and said faintly, Enough. Stop killing people. When Frank found out that his wife was dead and the child was still there, the bloodthirsty side that had been hidden in his heart was finally awakened. He put on his protective clothing and printed a white skull on it. Frank started his own road to revenge. Through his informant, Frank quickly found out who the men who had been following him were. When it was dark, Frank came to the other party's lair in full armor, and a unilateral massacre began. As a seasoned special soldier and an excellent FBI agent, these gangsters who can only bully honest people are not Frank's opponents at all. They were killed by Frank after a few encounters. It can be said that Frank walked to the, the 10th floor of the opponent's lair, as long as you go up to the next floor, you can find the opponent's leader. But at this moment, Adam fell from the sky and landed between Frank and the gangsters, blocking Frank's way. Enough, Frank, stop killing people. After seeing it, Frank said indifferently, shying. I know you are a superhero, but this is my business, please don't worry too much. I want to let them know that justice still exists in this world. After hearing this, Adam said coldly, Oh, let me leave your business alone. HMPH, you think I'll ignore you when you kill someone like this? Are you claiming justice? You just want revenge. Frank said lightly, I have my own way. After speaking, he fired a few shots, intending to kill some seriously injured gangsters. Adam was slightly angry, and teleported to block Frank's bullet, saying, Sure enough, you people from the FBI are such careless fellows, no wonder they want to kill you. Frank sneered after hearing this, Oh, do you want me to enforce that kind of soft justice like you? Sorry, I can't do it yet. If you want to block my way, then I won't be polite. Adam was a little angry after hearing this, and said, I really don't know what gave you the courage to think that you can threaten me like this. After speaking, he moved his feet and knocked Frank down to the ground with a bang, and then kicked those who drove away. The big hand that came to kill Frank was knocked out. After Frank saw it, he sarcastically said, What's the use of you doing this? If you hold them in prison today, they will be released in a few days to continue doing evil. They will not pay for their mistakes. This is not justice at all. It is better to kill them with one shot. Then they will not continue to do evil. Adam said lightly, Sorry, I don't have the habit of killing people at will, and I don't think I have the right to decide whether other people's lives will continue. Frank snorted coldly. Then what about those random murderers, the one who blew up the entire fast food restaurant just to kill me? Why didn't you go and arrest them? After Adam heard this, he said, I know who did it in the fast food restaurant, and you know it too, but we don't have clear evidence to prove it. If you kill him now, you are just a murderer. 
If you can find out his criminal certificate and then take him to court, then you are a hero. We cannot be above the law, or the world will be destroyed by us. Frank shook his head and said, I don't want to be such an aggrieved hero. I just want to kill those people now. As for whether I will become a murderer, I don't think so much. After hearing this, Adam asked, What about Jack? You want Jack to follow you to live a life of hiding. Frank struggled to stand up immediately after hearing this and asked, Do you know where Jack is? Adam nodded after hearing this and said, You also know that Jack was seriously injured at the time and I sent him to the hospital. After I checked your information, I found that the target of the FBI and the underworld organization was you. I was afraid your son was killed by them, so I took your son to my residence for special treatment. After hearing this, Frank gritted his teeth and said, Sure enough, they won't let me go so easily. By the way, how about Jack? Adam explained. Jack is fine, but because Jack's treatment is special, there are some sequelae, you have to be mentally prepared. After hearing this, Frank said, as long as he's still alive. The murderous look in his eyes lessened a lot. After Adam saw it, he said, okay, I'll let you meet. He's on the plane outside. Athena, land on the roof. After speaking, he mentioned Frank, jumped out of the window again, and made several jumps to the roof. Adam took Frank to the roof, and the Batplane just landed in front of them. Frank saw the Batplane and said, Your plane is not bad, by the way, Jack, didn't you say it was inside? Why didn't I see him? As soon as he finished speaking, Jack jumped off the plane very happily when he saw his father, and said, Ah, Dad. I really found you. After speaking, he ran towards Frank. Frank looked at the very familiar face in front of him suspiciously, wondering why this young man called him father. Then I found that the other party ran towards me, seemed to want to hug me, turned around with a cold smile and wanted to shake off the other party, but found that I couldn't avoid the other party and was immediately hugged by him. Jack smiled and said, Dad, I miss you so much. Frank asked with a cold face, shying, what are you kidding? You won't tell me this is Jack, will you? Adam was a little embarrassed and said, ah, I said before that I prepared you mentally. Frank said angrily, Ha, Sha Ying, this is not my child at all, let him let me go. In fact, he wanted to break free, but found that he couldn't break free at all, the other party's strength was too great, and is still increasing. With tears in his eyes, Jack said, Dad, don't you want me anymore? Frank snorted coldly, Don't call me Dad, who are you? Jack looked at Frank innocently, and said, I'm Jack, what's wrong with you? My mother is dead, and you don't want me anymore, woo what's what's wrong with you? Frank found that Jack's appearance didn't look like a fake at all, and asked, shying, what's going on? Why did he call me dad? Adam explained, it's actually my fault. I used the undeveloped life serum to save Jack. Although I managed to save your child's life, Jack grew up to his present appearance within a week due to the side effects of the potion. Look at him carefully, he is Jack. Frank was shocked and carefully looked at the young man in front of him with a hint of doubt, and found that he was indeed very similar to himself when he was young, no wonder he felt a little familiar, but he still couldn't accept for a while that his child had grown from a 10-year-old to a 20-year-old in just one week. It's crazy, it's unbelievable. Adam apologized. I'm sorry, if it weren't for me, your child wouldn't have become like this. Although Frank was a little shocked, he didn't blame Adam. After all, if it weren't for the other party's own child, he would have been silenced by the FBI, or he had been brainwashed by the FBI to become a tool. Forget it, I don't blame you, you are also here to save Jack, and the most important thing is that he is still alive, which is more important than anything else. By the way, besides the change in his appearance, his strength and speed seem to have also increased are there any sequelae? Adam explained, don't worry about this, there are no sequelae. If there is any, it means that his physical fitness has been fully improved by the life serum, but he has not yet learned to control his own strength. It may take him a while. Frank breathed a sigh of relief after hearing this, these are trivial matters, as long as he trains well, he can control his own strength. He looked at his son lovingly, and said apologetically, sorry, Jack, I didn't recognize you. Jack smiled and shook his head after hearing this, and said, it's okay, I was also shocked when I woke up today, but dad, I'm already very powerful, and I can catch you right away. 
Frank laughed. Yeah, my son is already the best. Seeing the smiling faces of the father and son, Adam also smiled and asked, By the way, Frank, what are you going to do now? Frank looked at his son and said, The thing I want to do most now is to bring my son to my friends, and then train this kid well. Adam asked suspiciously after hearing this, Ah, train him, why? Frank said lightly, I hope he can be free. Adam nodded after hearing this, and said, Okay, it is indeed time to train well, as long as he is trained, he will definitely reach the level of Captain America, so the most important thing for you is to set a good example for him, otherwise he may it will become a radical person, which is not good for the whole society. When Frank saw his son again, the hostility in his heart dissipated a lot, so he smiled and said, don't worry, my son will definitely become a hero, see the previous conversation between Adam and Frank. By the way, if possible, Edward how about letting me handle Michelle's affairs myself? After hearing this, Adam said, oh, haven't you given up revenge yet? And it's very dangerous. Frank smiled and said, I did not give up revenge, but you can rest assured that I will not kill anyone this time, I assure you. In the name of my son. As for the danger, please don't forget, I am from the FBI. Adam smiled and said, ha ha, good. As long as you can promise not to kill anyone, then I won't interfere with your actions. After Frank saw his son, the hostility in his heart had dissipated a lot. Hearing that Adam told him to kill less people, he glanced at his son and said, I will try my best. After Adam heard this, he said, I know what you are worried about, but we can change our thinking, as long as you find all the evidence and then post the evidence on the internet, then those people will lose their protective umbrella and will be arrested. Public opinion will be sent to a fair court. After hearing this, Frank said, Okay, I'll think about it when I go back. Adam smiled and said, Well, that's fine. By the way, where are you going now? I'll take you there. Frank thought that it might be difficult to take Jack out because he was wanted by the FBI and some black organizations, so he nodded and said, Okay, please send us to the small town of Wilson, I still have a few friends there, and then I'll take the baby abroad, and after a few years when Jack is fully grown, we'll come back to avenge Jack's mother. Adam nodded and said, Okay, I'll take you there. Several people flew to the town soon, put Frank and Jack down in a remote place, Adam waved to them and prepared to leave. Jack looked at Adam and said, Shying, can I still visit you? Adam nodded with a smile, and said, Of course, as long as your father agrees for you to come out, you can come to me. Jack glanced at his father after hearing this, and Frank smiled and said, As long as you can do what I ask, I will let you out. Jack nodded fiercely, and said, Okay, I will definitely be able to complete it. And I want to become a superhero like Sha Ying. Adam smiled and said, Okay, if you are ambitious, if one day you really go this way, I will give you a set of equipment. After hearing this, Jack said excitedly, Okay, okay, we have an agreement. Adam nodded and said, Hee hee, good, it's getting late, I should go back too, we will meet again by fate. After speaking, he drove the batplane again and left the town. Watching the batplane rapidly shrink and disappear, Frank asked very seriously, Jack, do you really want to be a superhero? Jack nodded seriously, and said, Well, I will definitely become a superhero and catch those villains, so that no one will lose their mother again. Frank looked at Jack and sighed softly, hugged Jack and asked, It's hard and hard to become a superhero, can you bear it? Jack said proudly, Of course, I have grown up, and I can bear any difficulties. Frank nodded slightly after hearing this, looked at his son, and thought to himself, it seems that the life serum Sha Ying used has not only strengthened his body, the child has become much tougher. Thinking of this, Frank took his son back to John and Jamie, and then decided to leave the United States and go to Africa. First, he could escape the FBI's pursuit, and second, he could just train his children. Equals 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 equals. The next day. After Adam got up, he went to the airport, because Christine was the morning plane, and he went to pick her up. As soon as he arrived at the airport, many reporters surrounded him and began to ask questions. Excuse me, Mr. Stark, did you come to the airport to pick up Miss Christine? 
Adam, are you serious this time? I heard that the Daily Bugle has been bought by you. Is it because they reported negative news about Miss Christine last time? I heard that the reporter's legs were broken. Did you ask someone to do it? Wait, wait, I keep asking noisily. Adam frowned, thinking, perhaps we should invite some bodyguards over. Although our own strength does not need to be protected, at least it can be used to block these reporters. Thinking of this, Adam avoided these reporters with a cold face and waited quietly for Christine's arrival at the exit. But although Adam ignored these reporters at all, these reporters still kept approaching Adam and asking questions, which really annoyed Adam. Don't lean any further, or your newspaper office will receive a court leaflet tomorrow. Don't worry, I have money and time, and I can sue you slowly. Hearing what Adam said, the reporter shrank immediately, and left Adam with a smile, but did not walk away, waiting for Christine's arrival from afar. Soon, the crew of, Twilight, walked out of the station under the leadership of director Alice. Looking at the fans shouting around, the stars and the crew waved their hands, and then walked towards the station under the protection of security personnel, the door. Christine was also walking in the middle of the crew, and soon saw Adam looking at him with a smile on his face, and sped up his pace slightly, and Christine came to Adam's side. You came, Adam smiled and said, yes, you see that you have lost a lot of weight. After hearing this, Christine said, no, if director Alice heard your words, he would definitely be depressed, ha <laughs> ha. Adam put his arms around Christine's waist very naturally, and said, I only care about you, but it seems that you haven't changed much. When I go back and see her again, I will say thank you. Christine said angrily after hearing this, let me tell you, director Alice may not meet you again. You have broken the rules she set. You don't know how angry the director was at the beginning. Adam was taken aback, and said, really? Just because I abducted his heroine? Isn't this director too stingy? Christine covered her mouth and smiled, speaking so badly, what is abduction? After hearing this, Adam laughed, and took Christine back to a villa in Queens in his sports car after leaving the airport. As for the single beach villa in Manhattan, he still didn't want more people to enter that villa. Because the two have been separated for a few weeks, there are a lot of things to talk about. After dinner together, the newcomer who has just started a relationship began to tell about his lovesickness and all kinds of interesting things he encountered in their respective jobs. Time is lost more quickly in the company of joy and love. The next day, after breakfast, Christine looked at Adam and said, Adam, it's time for us to leave. Didn't you say you were going to your parents' place? Adam smiled and said, Yeah, my parents have always wanted to see you. Don't worry, they are very nice and don't have so many rules. After all, we are not a noble family. You know, some people call us the family as an upstart. Christine chuckled and said, I've actually heard of this, it seems that your father said it himself. After hearing this, Adam smiled and said, That's right, he admitted it at the party again, but even so, so what, HMPH, my father never looked down on those guys. Christine wrinkled her pretty nose lightly, and said, yes, this is what I admire the most about Mr. Howard. That night, Adam took Christine back to Howard Stark's villa. Maria Stark was very happy after seeing it, and praised Adam for finding a good girl for him to cherish. Afterwards Adam and Howard Stark chatted for a while. Howard Stark mentioned that he had formed a partnership with Norman Osborne, and obtained 5% of the stock of Osborne's company at a reserve price on the grounds of helping him obtain research qualifications. After hearing this, Adam said, Hee hee, yes, Norman Osborne is a capable and ambitious person. I believe that Osborne Enterprise will develop very well under her hands. After hearing this, Howard Stark said with a smile, I am also very optimistic about him. You can cooperate with him in the future. He seems to have righteous thoughts. Well, let's not talk about it. I heard that you have bought the Daily Horn. Adam was very grateful to his father. He knew that Howard didn't like Norman Osborne's business at all, and everything he did was to pave the way for himself and Tony. At this time, when his father mentioned the Daily Bugle, Adam nodded and said, Well, that's right, I have already acquired the Daily Bugle, and now I am going to increase investment in the Daily Bugle. Howard Stark said, Yes, this idea is fine. I thought you really bought that newspaper just for Christine. After hearing this, Adam shrugged and said, I do have this idea in it, 
but since I bought the daily horn, I will do the best. And I have encountered some things recently, and found that if I have the media under me to help me influence public opinion may make another career of mine go more smoothly. Howard nodded, and said, yes, I agree with your idea. If you control public opinion, you will be invincible. By the way, why does the FBI keep pestering you? Adam briefly talked about Frank's matter, of course he did not mention Jack's situation, and said, this is the reason why I plan to increase investment in the Daily Bugle, and I will use my identity and the Daily Bugle to make those criminals the elements are all arrested, and all the crimes of those guys are exposed so that they have nowhere to escape. Howard Stark frowned and asked, but in this way, wouldn't the staff of the Bugle Daily be very dangerous? Although you are the boss of the newspaper, you are my son after all, and your strength is also very high. Those people can't murder you, but your newspaper staff doesn't have your background or strength. Adam explained, with my identity, they don't dare to blatantly harm others. I will also keep an eye on those people in the dark, so as not to let them hurt the employees of the newspaper. After hearing this, Howard said, it's good that you have your own ideas, but in this way, you need a righteous and brave person for the editor-in-chief of the newspaper. Do you need me to help you find some people? Adam shook his head and said, the current editor-in-chief of the Bugle Daily is a good candidate. I have investigated him and he is very suitable. After hearing this, Howard said, well, since you have this idea, just let it go, I support you. Adam said, thank you, Dad. After that, the two talked about other things, and then Adam took Christine out of here and went back to the villa in Queens, because they were lingering all day this morning, so Adam and Kristen just hugged each other and slept, didn't do anything else. Adam and Christine slept soundly, but in the New York branch of S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury was furious looking at the information in his hand. Why can't you even do such a thing? It's this hero again, it seems that our super soldier plan must be accelerated. Through the information he received, he knew that Edward Michel and the boss of the Underworld organization wanted to harm the Frank family, so he sent his men to let them keep an eye on Frank. Save Frank alone. Because Nick Fury knows Frank's character, as long as his wife and children die, he will burn everything like a dragon that has broken free from its shackles, and this person has clear grievances and grievances. As long as S.H.I.E.L.D. saves him, Frank can be recruited very smoothly. S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to get an elite agent. But unfortunately, Nick Fury's abacus was in vain, and all the plans were destroyed by Sha Ying. In order to let Frank join S.H.I.E.L.D., he even decided to kill Jack who was rescued by Sha Ying, but just as they were about to win doing it, Sha Ying arrived in time and took Jack away, making their plan fail again. When he heard that his plan had failed, he was immediately angry. After investigating, he found out that it was an FBI agent who angered Sha Ying, which made Sha Ying, who usually doesn't meddle in other people's business, intervene in this matter. At this moment, Nick Fury even wanted to kill the agent, but he also knew that his plan was not glorious enough to question Sha Ying, so he had to sulk secretly. And at this time, he heard his subordinates report that the FBI was setting a trap to catch Sha Ying, which made Nick Fury gloat. Although S.H.I.E.L.D. is originally a large worldwide organization, it is in charge of all supernatural events that occur in this world. But because Howard Stark, the founder of S.H.I.E.L.D., is an American, and S.H.I.E.L.D. has gradually become an organization affiliated with the United States, so the intelligence agencies of other countries simply ignore them. S.H.I.E.L.D. gradually it has become an existence that wipes the ass of various countries. Therefore, as a colleague of the FBI, Nick Fury laughed when he heard that the FBI actually wanted to trouble Sha Ying. Maria Hill looked at Nick Fury and said, so what should we do now? Should we continue looking for Frank? Nick Fury shook his head and said, No need, Sha Ying has already met Frank. Since Frank's son is still alive, Frank will definitely choose to take care of his own child. We are already late. Maria Hill shrugged her shoulders and said, Okay, I'll listen to you. Nick Fury asked, How is Natasha? Maria Hill replied, She has fully recovered, but I see her sometimes staring at the sky in a daze. It seems that she will not be able to do tasks in the near future. After hearing this, Nick Fury said, Don't worry, I said I would give her a vacation. I believe she will forget about this as soon as possible and recover. Maria Hill said, By the way, the US military has asked Norman Osborne to study super serums. It seems that Howard Stark has also contributed a lot in the process. 
Nick Fury was immediately furious after hearing this, and said, this old guy, obviously we asked him for help before but didn't agree, but at this time he actually helped outsiders obtain research qualifications. He is really an annoying old guy. Maria Hill asked lightly, what are we going to do? Nick Fury sighed, and said, the information about the super serum was leaked to the military by General Ross. I couldn't stop it after I found out about it. I wasn't worried at all that they would be able to crack the secret of the super serum, but Norman Osborn is a leading figure in the biotechnology industry, we have to guard against, um, send a few people to secretly monitor him and report any problems immediately. Maria Hill nodded slightly and said, yes, director. Nick Fury looked at Maria Hill and said, I hope you will supervise this matter yourself and don't let these people below do bad things again. Maria Hill nodded and left Nick Fury's office. Nick Fury stayed in the office, closed his eyes and thought for a long time, then picked up the phone and dialed a number, saying, Doctor, I agree with the method you proposed last time, but if there is any problem, I will not admit that I am with you. You've been in touch. The voice on the other side of the phone was a little excited, and said, Oh. You actually agreed, haha, great, you can rest assured that I will succeed, and I know that there is a person who can be our test product, and I can make him willing accept the experiment. After hearing this, Nick Fury said lightly, it's none of my business. What I want is a super serum that can be mass produced. If you can't complete this, you may suffer some consequences. After all, we have some problems with the government. Not the same, our money is not so easy to earn. The person on the other side of the phone was not frightened by Nick Fury, he said with a hint of madness in his voice, hee hee, don't worry, I have gone through many animal experiments, although there have been a few deviations in the process, but I think it's also because humans and animals are different, and it's not my problem, so don't worry this time, I will succeed. Winter goes to spring, time has passed a few months without knowing it, and today is the second spring. During this period of time, Twilight Saga, produced by Seguang Company has been released and achieved good results, and Christine is also loved by fans because of her increasingly mature acting skills. Adam also made a lot of achievements during this period. He took out the life recovery liquid formula that was diluted dozens of times and cooperated with Norman Osborne to obtain the shares of Osborne Enterprises, became one of the major shareholders of Osborne Enterprises. As for the life serum, Adam felt that it was not the time for it to be released, so he didn't take it out. It is also worth mentioning that in the process of cooperating with Norman Osborne, Adam knew that Norman Osborne suffered from a special genetic disease. The normal way. This is also the reason why Norman Osborne gave Adam 20% of the company's shares without hesitation after seeing Adam take out the life recovery liquid formula. However, because the liquid medicine has been diluted a lot by Adam, it is not very useful for Norman Osborne's genetic disease. At most, it only allows him to live a few more years, but it is enough for Norman Osborne, he is confident that he will develop a medicine to treat himself during this period of time. Of course, Adam's other identity, Sha Ying, has been pretty good in the past few months. Apart from the occasional mutants with strange abilities that make him a little troubled, he hasn't encountered any strong opponents. Moreover, Adam has asked the Bugle Daily to set up a special issue dedicated to reporting stories about Sha Ying and the criminal evidence of those caught by Sha Ying. The consequence of the Bugle Daily's report was that the chief of the New York City Police Department was arrested for accepting bribes and acting as an umbrella for underworld organizations. On this day, Adam came to Howard Stark's private island early in the morning, which is where he landed for the first time. Of course, he didn't come here to find out his life experience, but because he received a call from Logan a few days ago, saying that Professor X invited him to visit X Academy and thanked him for saving their lives before. The reason why Professor X called so late was because they moved Academy X to an island, and there seemed to be a problem with Phoenix Girl. Adam didn't know what the problem was. Not long after Adam came to the island, he saw the X-Men fighter jets slowly land on the flat ground beside them from far to near. The rear hatch of the plane was opened, and Wolverine Logan in a black uniform was biting a cigar and walking away, down. After Adam saw it, he smiled and said, Hey, Logan, are you okay? Logan walked over to Adam and hugged him, and said, It's not bad. I became a teacher and gave lectures to school children. After hearing this, Adam said, Oh, hee hee, I really can't believe it, and you seem to be used to wearing this uniform. 
Logan nodded with a smile, and said, Yes, I used to wander around without a fixed place to live, and now I suddenly find that X Academy has become my home, hee <laughs> hee, I also like this profession very much. Adam shrugged and said, It's fine if you like it. Oh, yes, I found some information about you. Although it's a bit weird, I think you can still accept it. After speaking, he handed a brown paper bag to Logan. These materials were collected by Athena through various means, and Adam was really scared when he saw it for the first time. He didn't expect that Logan, who has always called himself a brother, turned out to be a person who participated in World War I and World War II, and Logan and his brother Saber Toothed Tiger were members of the Howling Special Forces, and they fought with Captain America. Although they left the Howling Special Forces for various reasons, they still left a lot of legends at that time. Logan quietly looked at the materials in his hand, then took a deep puff of his cigar, and said, Hee hee, it seems my story is really long enough, thank you. All burned. Adam shrugged after seeing it, and said, Who made me and you brothers, ah, even though your age is more than ten times mine. Logan smiled and said, Forget it, let's let it go, we are still brothers. Adam happily said, Good. Ha ha. At this moment, Storm's voice came from the plane. Can't you two chat on the road? Logan looked at Adam and said, Okay, let's go, the professor is waiting. After hearing this, Adam knew that Professor X had asked him to visit the academy not only to meet him, but also for other things. Adam nodded and boarded the plane with Logan. Storm saw that Logan and Adam had come up, chatted with Adam casually, and then drove the plane to leave the island. The new address of College X meets an island on the high seas, an island bought by Professor X. As for why Professor X chose this place, Adam doesn't understand, but it can be guessed that it was probably because of the striker invasion last time. Because of their school. After the plane flew for about two hours, Adam and the others finally arrived at the new X Academy. During the descent, Adam felt the existence of an energy layer. Just now I felt that we seemed to have passed through an energy layer. What is this? After hearing this, Logan explained. Oh, you said this, it is a thing made by a scientist in our school. When it is fully opened, the strongest laser beam of Cyclops can't penetrate the rain cover. Adam was taken aback when he heard this, and said, awesome. He knew that it was very difficult to make such a protective layer. Judging from his flash memory, he would not be able to make such a huge protective cover for at least 10 years. He did not expect that someone in the X Academy had already made it. Although Adam doesn't like Cyclops a little, but it is undeniable that even Adam dare not say that the laser beam emitted by Cyclops with all his strength can be followed, and this protective shield can block Cyclops full blow. The most indispensable thing is all kinds of talents. It seems that I still underestimated the mutants. It seems that it is time to mass produce the enhancement fluid, otherwise human beings may really be eliminated by nature. Just when Adam was thinking about the future, the plane had stopped very smoothly. Adam quickly gathered his mind and got off the plane with Logan and Storm. He saw Professor X in a wheelchair and standing behind him. The Phoenix girl, Cyclops, and a man with blue hair who looks like a human lion. Professor X smiled gently. Welcome, Mr. Shying. Adam smiled and said, Thank you for coming to pick me up, Professor X. He was still very polite to the old man Adam. Professor X smiled slightly, and said, You have met Chin and Scott. This one is my friend, a famous scientist Hank McCoy. After hearing what Professor X said, he remembered the identity of this person, and said, Hello, Dr. Hank, nice to meet you here. Hank McCoy smiled and said, You can call me Beast, many people call me that, Sha Ying, I have heard of your name, but I have never seen it. Adam smiled and said, My name is Dr. Hank. He <laughs> he, I've read your article and watched an interview about you, but I didn't expect you to be, um, something different. Hank McCoy smiled and said, surely you didn't expect that I'm also a mutant. Adam nodded and said, that's right, I really didn't think of it. And your imagination doesn't match the previous one. How did you let yourself have a human appearance? After hearing this, Hank McCoy said, this is the latest thing I have developed, a mutant ability suppressor. Although his drug effect is not strong enough, it can hide your identity in a short time. At this time, Professor X suddenly said, Okay, Hank, let's talk later, it's very impolite to let guests stay at the door. Mr. Shying, please come in. After seeing it, 
Adam smiled and said, okay, it's better to be respectful than to obey. Adam followed Professor X and others into the office building of School X, a European-style castle. After a few simple greetings, Professor X talked about his purpose for finding Adam. I asked Mr. Sha Ying to come here to deal with a person. Adam asked suspiciously, oh, who is it? Can the professor call me here? Professor X said flatly, Magneto. Adam asked after hearing this, Magneto. Professor, do you know the whereabouts of Magneto? You must know that Adam has been looking for the whereabouts of Magneto for the past few months, but he still hasn't found any news about Magneto, which makes Adam very depressed. Professor X nodded and said, Yes, we have the whereabouts of Magneto. He hid in a small country in Africa, gained the leadership of that country by force, and gathered some heinous mutants around him, plotting some kind of conspiracy. After hearing this, Adam's heart moved, and he asked, Then, Professor, did you ask me to come today? Professor X nodded and said, That's right. I called you here today. One is to thank you for what happened last time, and the other is to ask if I can help us. Adam said very simply, Of course no problem. Professor X nodded and said, This operation is very difficult, because I got information from some old friends that Magneto cooperated with a wizard there, so it may be more dangerous, you can think about it. After hearing this, Adam smiled and said, Don't worry about this, I won't make fun of my life. After hearing this, Professor X smiled and said, In that case, please rest here for one night before setting off, and visit our school by the way. Our preparations are not yet complete, and we need some special equipment. Adam smiled and said, No problem, I just happened to have the intention of visiting X school. Professor X nodded and said, Then, Mr. Shying, I will let Chin and Logan accompany you. The rest of the people still have a few classes to attend. I will give you the information of a mutant, so that you can be prepared. Adam nodded and said, Well, yes, Professor, you can do whatever you want. Professor X and the others said goodbye to Adam and left here, while Jean Grey and Logan stayed with Adam. Chin Gele has long hair at this time and looks even more charming, but fortunately Adam has a girlfriend now. Although he appreciates Chin Gele's beauty, he didn't say anything gaudy, let alone Logan it's there too, isn't it? Chin Gri asked with a smile. So, Mr. Sha Ying, where do you need to visit? After hearing this, Adam smiled and said, Ms. Chin, you can call me Adam, and you don't need to say Mr. Shying. The name Adam is a very common name in the United States. He is not afraid that people from the X-Men can associate that playboy and billionaire with just one name, which is the mysterious hero in front of him. Chin Gele obviously didn't expect Adam to say her name, she was slightly taken aback, and then said, Well, thank you for your trust, Adam, you can also call me Chin, let alone Ms. Chin. Logan smiled and said, hee hee. Adam, I didn't expect you to say your name, so I don't have to worry about it. Adam shrugged, and said, the name was taken out because people shouted it, and it's just a name. By the way, can I take a look at your classroom? I'm just curious about how it's different from other schools. Chin Gri nodded after hearing this, and said, okay, please follow me. After speaking, she took Adam and left the reception room, and then brought Adam to a class. The class was at the junior level, so Adam saw that the Iceman who had frozen the dam with him before was also in it, and next to him was the little rascal. Adam looked at the back door for a few minutes, and found that the lecture was not on the knowledge of ability control as he imagined, but on American history. He asked a little strangely, do they usually only study such courses? Didn't they learn the ability to control mutations? Chin Gri explained, We do have courses on controlling mutant abilities, but they are still young, and it's too early to talk about them now. Adam was taken aback after hearing this, and said, Then this X school is no different from ordinary schools, oh, of course, except that the students and teachers here are all mutants. Chin Gele was taken aback when she heard the words, and said, Is there anything wrong with this? Adam asked, haven't you thought about teaching them the ability to control themselves and make them superheroes? You must know that everyone here has this ability. This way, it may change the attitude of humans towards mutants. Chin Gele shook her head and said, No, we just want the children to grow up safely. Many people here are afraid of their own abilities, and even more afraid of ordinary humans. 
if they are allowed to become superheroes, something will happen. Adam shrugged and said, well, I didn't say anything. By the way, Logan, what class do you teach? After hearing this, Logan said, I teach them combat abilities and skills. Unfortunately, my courses have not started yet, and our virtual battlefield system has not yet been completed. Adam became interested immediately after hearing this, and asked, virtual battlefield system? What kind of system? Chin Gri said after hearing this, this is a simulated battlefield based on the virtual reality system developed by Stark Industries, which can simulate a more realistic battlefield. After hearing this, Adam secretly admired the person who transformed the system. After all, Adam sold him to Howard Stark after developing the holographic imaging system, and then did not continue to develop it. And Stark Industries only used holographic images for general applications, and never thought that holographic images could be used to create a special application such as a simulated battlefield. Adam praised, the person who transformed the virtual reality system is really a genius. You must know that even Stark Industries didn't think that holograms can be used like this. He decided to let Siguang Film Company set up a game department after returning home, and then use this system to make a game, wondering about using this technology when making sci-fi movies. Chin Gri said with a smile, This is made by Dr. Hank, do you want to try it? Although some functions have not been completed yet, it is still possible to simply try it. After hearing this, Logan also said, Yes, Adam, we said before that we will use our full strength to fight again. It is better to hit the sun than choose another day. Let's just say today, how about in the simulated battlefield? After hearing this, Adam smiled and said, Okay, I also want to see how strong you are. Chin Gri also wanted to see Adam's strength, nodded and said, Okay, I'll take you there. After speaking, she brought Adam and Logan to the simulation room. Logan and Adam walked into the simulation room. Adam found that the surrounding walls were covered with special alloys containing energy fluctuations. Just as he was about to ask about this special alloy, Chin Gray's voice sounded from the room. The inner wall of the simulation room is made of special alloy, which can absorb a certain amount of energy attacks. You can use it with confidence, and in order to prevent you from destroying the simulation room, I opened the energy shield, so don't worry that the power will destroy it if you can't bear it. Adam nodded and said, so that's the case. No wonder I saw energy in these metals. Logan took out a cigar and asked, where is the battlefield to choose? This room can simulate any scene. Adam heard the words and said, whatever, just choose Times Square in Manhattan. After Chin Gri heard this, she said, okay, Manhattan Times Square, the preparation time is two minutes, please wait a moment. Adam and Logan waited for a while after hearing the words, and soon Adam found that the scene in front of him turned into Times Square in Manhattan. If Logan was standing in front of him and there was no one around, Adam would have thought he had come to the real Times Square. Adam praised, it's really realistic, Dr. Hank is really powerful. At this time, Logan was biting a cigar in his mouth, brushing his hands to pop out the metal claws, and said in a vague voice, Come on, Adam, let me see how powerful you are. Adam put away his thoughts, and said lightly, Okay. As you wish, Logan, be careful. After speaking, he kicked his right fist and hit Logan fiercely. The battle between Wolverine and Sha Ying is imminent. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.